welcome you to opening day for Texas football and, uh, inside Texas Stadium. A packed house is always on hand for Longhorn football. With Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont. Thank you very much for joining us. And we're over 120 years of Texas football, Ray. And the excitement around this team, the questions are, are they undersold? They were picked fourth in the Big Man. 12 preseason. Are they oversold? Some have them in the top 10. Some have talked about this team being in a BCS Bowl. Where do you find it? I think they're being undersold big time, as a matter of fact. I think Texas is ready for a Big 12 title run. They've got all kinds of things working for them. 19 returning starters. A quarterback, David Ashew, I think is the best in the Big 12. And they also have a defense that has a chip on their shoulder. They're a little angry. The depth on this team is amazing. The weapons that they have, everything has come together. I think this will be a huge year for the Longhorns. They begin with New Mexico State, and let's be honest, this is the team that's had its struggles recently. Just one win last year. They bring in Doug Martin, who had been on the staff before as an offensive coordinator, and he is trying to change things in Las Cruces. I mean everything in Las Cruces. Well, they need to. And let me be the first to welcome the Aggies into the 21st century. They actually got themselves a legitimate strength and conditioning coach in Don Decker, and he has already changed the bodies of this team. They also have moved to an up-tempo spread offense, which is something that I feel that, that is modern and something they need to do. So they are putting it together here a little bit, and also the recruiting has changed. Now, no longer are they going to California. They are coming right here in the state of Texas. In fact, eight members of their 2014 class are from the state of Texas. They only have 10 Texas guys on the roster right now, so they're trying to get it done. And you get to Las Cruces through Texas. You fly to El Paso you and go. make the drive west, so the opportunity is certainly there for New Mexico State, but they do have a long way to go. Some of the numbers are a little bit ugly for them. For the Longhorns, a lot of people, Ray, point to that bull win, the Valero Alamo Bowl, as the beginning of this season, 2013. Yeah, and that's what they told us, and that was a huge game for them for a lot of reasons. Number one, I think David Ash established himself in that game as the true leader. No longer has to look over his shoulder and see if, if there's a McCoy behind him, someone coming in to take over the business. So I think he's much more comfortable, and, uh, you know, with that, the team kind of grew right along with him. They need that guy that can stand out front and be the leader. And here they are. They're led by Nate Boyer, number 37, an inspiring story. Former soldier now playing football as the long snapper for this team. He figured out, what's my best chance to play? I'll be the deep snapper, and he's done an effective job. And, of course, his locker room leadership is very much valued around Longhorn land. Well, another big thing here in 1963, Texas won the national championship. It's the 50th anniversary of that, and the celebration will be going on all season long. But turn it over now to our stadium public address announcer, Bob Cole, for more. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we would like to recognize the honorary captains representing the University of Texas in tonight's game. Welcome back, the 1963 National Championship team. And representing the team, our 1963 captains, Tommy Ford, Coach David McWilliams, and representing Scott Appleton, his sister, Tresha Appleton Steffens. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a Texas size round of applause to these true Longhorn legends that represent our very first national championship. And please continue to direct your attention to midfield for the coin toss. Captains from both teams are meeting with officials right now. Let's meet the third member of our team, Kelly Hartung, who's standing by with Coach Mac Brown. 
Thanks, Dave. Coach Brown, as we both know, there are a lot of unknowns with this New Mexico State team. What do you need to see from your team to consider this game a success? We want to dominate both lines of scrimmage. We want to get a fast start, and we want to make some key plays in the kicking game. A lot of responsibilities on David Ash's shoulders this season. How do you describe the growth you've seen from him on and off the field? He's in a great place right now. He's had a tremendous spring in camp, and I think the fourth quarter at uh, the Oregon State game last year really helped him move forward, and I hope to see the same tonight. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Dave. Kaylee and coach, thank you very much. Well, David Ash is the perfect place to start because he is, along with Mac Brown, the face of this football program. Yeah, and I tell you what, he's right where he needs to be right now as far as his comfort, not only in the in the game and on the field, but in this program as a leader. And then they're jumping to a up-tempo offense, which I think suits him ideally. He has an understanding of where he has to go, the personnel groups that he's going to deal with. And man, does he got some weapons all over the field. The running backs, Jonathan Gray, Joe Bergeron, Malcolm Brown. It doesn't get much better than that. You're going to hand the ball off. And then the other weapons on the outside, DeJay Johnson, Jackson Shipley, Marcus Johnson. He's got all kinds of places to go with this football to make this an explosive offense. Of course, you don't like offense because you play defense in the NFL and the USFL and in college. And this is an unhappy group of defenders. And you like that. Yeah, I do. And Manny Diaz told us, hey, we're angry. They got a chip on their shoulder. They feel like they uh, have taken some heat on things that they had already cleaned up. The big one being missed tackles. And so I'll tell you, there's nothing more beautiful than a defense that's a little bit angry, David. Well, it's also nothing more beautiful than a defense that has their star players back in Jordan Hicks and Jackson Jeffco, too. Don't forget about how devastating those losses were for those outstanding players. They're healthy. Talked to both of them yesterday, and they're more than ready to go, and so are we. After a little bit of a save by our referee, Cooper Castleberry, it will be in New Mexico State receiving the first half kickoff after the Longhorns deferred. Yeah, I didn't blame the kid. I wanted to kick, too, every time. Didn't matter who won the toss. Get out there and play some defense, set a tone. Nick Rose, what a leg he has. There's a very good likelihood we're going to start with a touchback. And that's exactly what happened as Adam Shapiro decided to take a knee. And here is Andrew McDonald, the senior from Pomona, California, but he's only had three pass attempts in his college career at this level. You see what he did at Santa Ana College. He was very good there. But this is the first opportunity. This is his team. But the question around New Mexico State is how long is this going to be his team? Well, they do have King Davis the third, a true freshman that will see action tonight. But in the meantime, McDonald is a kid who has a uh, a pretty good strong arm very accurate on the intermediate throws poise control not much of a threat with his legs number 25 Jeremy Morrison is the tailback already going deep into the play clock on the first snap of the season and we're going to begin with a delay of game penalty And it's Doug Martin, the head coach of New Mexico State. He was the head coach at Kent State from 2004 through 2010. His eighth season as a college head coach. First and 15. Morrison for a couple. It'll be second down and about 13 as the middle of the Texas line led by Cedric Reed gets in the way. <laughs> for our Chick-fil-A impact players of the game. Well, Devontae Wallace is the best pro spot prospect for the Aggies. He's the left tackle. King Davis, we'll see him later. Talk about him as a quarterback. And then Jeffco and Hicks, both back from injuries from last year. They're the heart, soul, and the new leaders on this defense. Watch for those guys to fly around here today. Stay with Morrison. He'll get across the 25 to 27. Going to be third down and long. Tackle made by Jordan Hicks and Ray. We were talking this morning, and this is a player you really love. Well, I have a soft spot in my heart for linebackers, Dave, as you might imagine. And I'm watching Jordan Hicks on tape, and I never see one guy able to block him. He just beats every one-on-one -on -one situation. He wins. And when you got a guy that can do that, that, that uh, demands a lot of attention from an offense. Aggies need eight. Absolutely nowhere, smothered by Chris Whaley. 
Excellent job. They tried to use the Longhorn speed against him, and it didn't work. And you're going to see Whaley right here. That's the nose tackle. Watch how he recognizes his screen and then retraces his steps right there. Bam, now he's just running laterally down, laterally down the line, and he catches the running back. That's pretty good movement for the big fella, 6'3", 295-pound fifth-year senior. Andre Dick standing at around the 34-yard line for the one of 12 Division I punters who hailed from Australia. Chapman Brown, and it's almost blocked. Fair catch made, and Diggs will temporarily drop it and recover it at the 40-yard line, a 36-yard kick. And it looks like Mikel Thompson almost got a piece of that. Well, here he is, David Ash. Is he, as Ray Bentley says, the best quarterback in the Big 12? We're going to find out. I think he is. You know, you look at the improvement that he had from his sophomore year into this, or into last year, I should say. A dramatic improvement, and particularly throwing the ball down the field. And now the next step is red zone efficiency and also keeping his dauber up. He gets mad at himself sometimes. Here's that diamond formation or pod or reverse wing T. And that guy right there, DeJ Johnson, is the one to watch. And he gets the ball in the first play. Dragging a tackler across the 45 to the 46 for a gain of six, second down and four. And let's revisit Ray, our Chick fil A impact players of the game. Well, the two guys that you'll see and hear about on defense Davis Cazares and uh, Treshawn Nixon. Cazares, a, a strong safety, acts more like a, a linebacker. And then DeJay Johnson, they're going to find all kinds of ways to get him the ball. And Jonathan Gray, the leading rusher from last year, is ready to go. And this is Ash on his own read. He gets across midfield of the 47-yard line, an attack made by George Callender. And there was some talk about getting David Ash a chance to run the ball a couple of times to kind of get him to break a sweat. And that's something I think a lot of quarterbacks like, is to take a little bit of a hit and get the blood flowing and get things going. And David Ash is one of those guys. Swing pass out of the backfield incomplete. It'll be second down and 10. Jonathan Gray not able to hang on to that one. Take a look at this. It's just a really uh, a quick screen, zipping it out to the outside, a little bit low and behind Gray. And when you're trying to go fast, you can't have the ball on the ground. Gray up the middle. That looked like he was really going to go places. He picks up four. It'll bring us to third down and six. Tackle made by Willie Mobley. Tripped him up. Early on, you are seeing the pace the Longhorns want to play at, and there will be a lot of substituting in this game on the Texas sideline. We'll see how smoothly they execute that throughout the night. Third and six, first down marker, catch made by Mike Davis. Davis inside the 30, lost the ball. Can the Aggies keep it in bounds? And they do. Nick Oliva. Recovers the football for the Aggies. It was a nice run by Davis after the catch, but he could not hang on. The ball stripped away. I think that was Darian Johnson. That yeah, is. Watch Johnson right there coming from behind the corner, and he tomahawks it from the backside. And you got to be careful. See how he's not protecting the ball? It gets away from his body. And Mike Davis knows better than that. And for him to kind of swing it around up there, you don't know where guys are going to come from. You have to protect it and hold it in tight. This is a New Mexico State team, Ray, that had nine turnovers forced all of last season. They take over at their own 23, and we have the officials stepping in. We have a clock issue, or possibly a review. The ruling on the field was a fumble that was recovered by New Mexico State. The previous play is under further review. Now, again, all plays are reviewed. Some get extra attention, and this is one of them that's going to get extra attention, and we'll tell you the impact of this. Is it really a fumble? Or will the Longhorns hang on to the ball and catch an early break? You wait all year for summer. This summer was definitely worth the wait. Summer's best event from Cadillac. Let summer try and pass you by. Visit Covert Cadillac or AustinCadillac.com for these attractive offers. 
This September 20th to 22nd, just what you've come to expect from the Circuit of the Americas. Not one, but two back-to-back world-class races. First up, the American Le Mans Series. Multi-class grid, prototypes, and GTs. Five races at once, a battle in every corner. And that's just the half of it. The FIA World Endurance Championship takes over with the thrilling and punishing six hours of the Circuit of the Americas. Three days of world championship racing, just $79. Kids 12 and under are free. Head to circuitoftheamericas.com and get your tickets now. Can one company energize an industry by fueling a more innovative workforce? Build a brighter tomorrow by rolling up its sleeves and providing a cleaner, more abundant energy source today. Inspire loyalty by constantly aspiring to be better in the workplace, in the community, and with customers. One company can. One Oak, the one in energy. The answer is in on whether or not this was a fumble. Ray, take a look and tell us what you think. Well, there's no doubt that Davis fumbles the football. What the question was is whether or not New Mexico State was out of bounds while they were touching the football. But you can see clearly that Oliva had it and he was in bounds. But the ruling stands and we go back to a very short game, maybe no gain at all. Cedric Green, number 88, stuffing it now. Texas is claiming they have the football. And the officials aren't fighting, so it'll be second down and 10 after not much there for Jeremy Morrison. We've seen a lot of runs up the middle already for the Aggies. Very conservative start for Doug Hart's play calling. Greg Brandon, the offensive coordinator, took over uh, the winter. He was here at opening day a year ago working for Wyoming. Well, he should be accustomed to what Texas does week one. This is two years in a row for him. Morrison again, and he's going to get to the 25, and that's going to be all third down and eight coming up. And I see Reed in there again, along with Whaley, and also Diggs. Yeah, and you're going to see the defense come and close and collapse. And uh, Malcolm Brown is the one who made that play, working to the outside into that contain area, forced the running back Morrison back inside to where help was. Texas bringing a little heat. There's the screen batted down. That was Jackson Jeffco who got a hand up there to swat that ball down. That's our first swat of the game. I'm changing this this deal on what you call a batted ball by a defensive lineman. After J.J. Watt had 16 in the NFL for Houston last year, they're called swats now in my book, and there's a swat from Jackson Jeffco to get things rolling. Well, it's, it's really going to be interesting to see if he plays a completely healthy year, how impactful he is going to be in the Big 12 and around college football. No doubt, Dave. I, I think he's a special talent looking at a number one draft pick right there. Dale Chapman Brown, the second punt. A lot of roll on this one. Down about the 28 yard line for the Longhorns after the 47 yard punt. Jackson Jeffcoat, a leader who's been more vocal in the offseason than he had been before. The talent, well, it's always been there. Texas football on the Longhorn Network is powered by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. The view from Mount Bunnell. So many unique views you can get in the city of Austin. And there's a beautiful one right there. And there's your score and time. And you get a pretty good view in the stadium, too. And 100,000 Texas fans packed to see their team ranked 15 against unranked New Mexico State, a team that won only one game last year. Texas, of course, coming back with the nine wins. Their first drive, five plays, 37 yards along Longhorns, and it resulted in a fumble by Mike Davis. So here comes David Ash, and this is the David Ash and Mike Davis combination is a big play combo for Texas, and I'm sure we'll see that plenty of times throughout the season. <laughs> Jonathan Gray, the tailback, number 32. go with Johnson again got one block in the backfield Johnson's got great speed into the 40 the 45 yard line and a big game there almost to the midfield Davis Cazares and there is the Jay Johnson 18 yards on the ground and here's the Jay Johnson anytime he's close to the quarterback he is going to come around and take it on some sort of reverse or a fly sweep and here he's got a lead blocker as well and they want to get the ball in his hands out in space as much as possible a nice block downfield too by Mike Davis 
deep shot down the middle field. Has a man. David is over. Threw him at the 10 yard line. Second and 10 coming up. Talked a, a lot, Ray, this weekend about the deep balls and David Ash thrown long. Well, this is, uh, I believe, Mike Davis's fault. He's going to take this route and he's going to bend it inside instead of staying on a straight line. And because of that, the ball gets overthrown by just a little bit and he had to work his way back outside. If he stays on the track that he's supposed to be on and get away from that safety instead of coming closer to him, that's a touchdown. It'll be a false start in the Longhorns. A false start by number 51 of the offense. It's a five-yard penalty, and it's still second down. Left tackle Donald Hawkins. It'll be here's Major Applewhite, the intense offensive coordinator, and he, of course, had a great career here in Texas as a quarterback. Interesting. He's on the field, and, and mostly just to be the so-called life coach of his quarterback, <laughs> David Ash. Second and 15. They're going to screen it this time. And New Mexico State swallows up Jonathan Gray. Good job by the Aggies defense. That's going to be a loss of two. Third down and 17 is next. Kevin Laudermill on the hit along with Brian Bonilla. This is a great read by Laudermill as he sees the same thing Chris Whaley saw earlier on the screen. And the best way to stop screens is to have those linemen recognize it. See which way this goes in contact before the snap. That's on Treshawn Nixon. Offside by number 56 of the defense. It's a five yard penalty and it's still third down. Got the wrong number, but the, the correct penalty. So it will now be third down. Still, however, a dozen to go. They've got to get to the Aggies 43. down and 12. The pressure here. Ash had great protection. He goes underneath to Jackson Shipley. That'll get them two yards short of the first down, Ray. Any thought here on fourth and two going for it at home? I don't I don't know. No, it's too early. Watch this blitz. You're going to have all three of these guys all just come and hit the middle and watch Texas pick this thing up. That's just a great job of understanding who's coming, where they're coming from. Mason Walters, the right guard, he's the one who saved the bacon right there. Well, guess what? They disagree with you, sir. Major Applewhite's going to call the play. You know what? Plus territory, Dave, I don't have a problem with this. Hang on here. We have a timeout called by New Mexico State. Their first time out of the half. Well, they went into a wildcat formation with Jonathan Gray to receive the snap. You saw Alex De La Torre, number 36, come into the game. Probably to block and that caused uh, Doug Martin to say wait a minute. I don't like this alignment at all a Major Applewhite first sat down with him yesterday at the meeting and he radiates intensity I mean he's pleasant yeah, to that talk took to you by surprise a little bit because most offensive coordinators are the so-called cerebral types Ray, mm. the guys who you know make sure the top buttons button and all the other stuff and wear ice glasses and the rest of it right. this cat looks like he wants to hit I kind of like that about Major I know you White. I'll be honest with you. That's what football's all about. I don't care which side of the ball you're on. Same formation here for the Longhorns. So they are going to go for it here. With Gray at that wildcat position. Unbalanced line to the right. Johnson in motion. It'll be Gray looking for room. And he won't get it. The Aggies hold on down. What a lift that's going to be for New Mexico State. You saw Brian Bonilla there, number 12, get in there to help undermine the play. And New Mexico State, along with Treshawn Nixon, has stopped the Longhorns twice. Watch what happens on the outside. You get the motion across here, and I think he should have handed this one off. Now, I'm assuming it's not a read as a typical zone read. I'm assuming they told Gray to just take it himself. But they're going to look at that, and when they come back to this, he's going to hand that thing off because there was a lot of room out on the outside for Dajay. Johnson best starting field position for New Mexico State so far tonight from their own 45 play action fake McDonald and a completed pass into Texas territory to Paris Scoggins a senior from Fontana California it'll be second down and three following the gain of seven and you saw the Texas defense hustling after that play and that's one thing I'm looking for how fast are they flying around how many hats are they going to get to the pile Pressure from the edge, out part of the 47, right to the marker. Looks like a first down. 
That's made by Jordan Bergstrom from Portland, Oregon. He's a junior. And we may have the first first down of the night for New Mexico State. In fact, it will be. They got to the Texas 44-yard line. Andrew McDonald makes a good decision getting that ball out and throwing it behind the blitz. That's the toughest place for the defense to cover because a guy's got to come out of position to make that coverage. Keep it. Sees a seam. He gets inside the 40 down to the 37 yard line. That's a seven yard pickup. It'll be second down and three. Tackled by Phillips. Just your basic option football. Quarterback keep following up inside. A good read by McDonald. Look who's playing fast. The Aggies. This time the handoff. That is Brandon Fenton for you. get a couple. So here comes a gigantic third down. And I, again, Ray, looking ahead, I've got to think that this is two down territory for New Mexico State. Why would you be conservative? Well, Greg Brandon, you see him right there. He's not uh, necessarily a conservative guy. So I, I think he's going to he's going to go for it here. He's got a chance. He could go play action to take a shot in the end zone is what I would do right here, knowing I had fourth down in my pocket. At 30 yards. There's your play action. Instead, they go underneath. They'll get the first down. That's made by Andrew Dean out of that Y receiver. Junior from Camarillo, California. And a gain of three. Keeps the chains moving. Michael Thompson on the stop for the Longhorns. Nice play call there by Greg Brandon. And then execution by the Aggies here. They're putting together a pretty nice drive right now. Again, the field position helped, too, starting after the turnover on downs at their own 45. Court again, you can see jumping on top of his back, Cedric Reed, number 80. You couldn't even see the ball carrier. A short gain there. They're going to give him one. Second and nine is next. And Cedric Reed, watch him right here, and he is just beating up Dada Richards right now. Uh, Dada needs Mama because <laughs> he is getting beat off the ball. to the 25 so once again it's going to be third down this time third and a long two after the gain of seven Thompson in there again on the stop and what they're doing with this this option game they're putting the middle linebackers Hicks and Edmund for the Longhorns in a really tough spot because they got to take that inside stuff first they go inside Ben Court doesn't make it here you go fourth in the yard what's the call Ray Field goal, get some points is what I would do. Yeah, but they've got they, this team hasn't made a field goal race since the early uh, October of 2012. Well, then I look to the due factor. They're about due. I, if I'm a New Mexico State fan, and I know we've probably got some folks watching who are rooting for those Aggies, I, I like the call here on fourth and eight to go. Being aggressive, Dave, you're right. 36% conversion on fourth downs last year in New Mexico State when they won just one game. Better hurry, though, down to six. I run to the left. They do, and this is very close. Looking across the field, Jackson Jeffcoat in there on the stop. If that official at the top, who just came in from the top of your screen down to the middle, is on the ball, it is not a first down. And there's a couple reasons I run left on there is they're going to take a measurement. Number one, you're running behind Devontae Wallace, the big senior left tackle. And then on the other one, Cedric Reed is having his way with Dada Richards right now. Cooper Castleberry is our referee, well known to Big 12 fans. Not even close. So interesting in the first quarter, we haven't had any points yet. We've had. Defenses make big stops on fourth downs, one of each. So Manny Diaz and his defense playing with that chip. But Doug Martin's Aggies have hung tough in a difficult environment to be if you're the visitor. Island of the city of Austin, we would like to, on behalf of everybody at Longhorn Network, like to welcome folks from Time Warner Cable to bring uh, this Longhorn Network to about a million and a half Texans. And we 
Thank you for joining us. Hope you've enjoyed the Longhorn Network programming you just saw last night and through this football game right here. And we're going to give you kind of a shocking stat of the day, at least in the first quarter, time of possession. Even Bebo looked just a little bit shocked. And New Mexico State leading in that category. Texas fumbled on their first possession, gave it up on downs, and a first appearance of the day from Malcolm Brown. He gets virtually nothing. It'll be second down and ten. But time of possession, I realize sometimes that statistic doesn't yeah. mean everything, Ray, but that, still. That in a, a quarter can get you a cup of coffee down at the corner. <laughs> Maybe about 30 years ago. Ash struggling with the snap. He's going to have to improvise and gets popped from behind. But when that happened, Kevin Laudermill lost his helmet. He will have to come off for the next play. Meantime, for third down and about five. That's the second consecutive play, and Aggie has lost his helmet. As you see, Ash just fumbling around trying to get this thing, and he turned it into nothing into something, a little bit of something. Ash going to have to improvise, and they're waiting for him. Closing in quickly. Saw Clint Bernard, number 13, the middle linebacker, picked up a couple. It's going to be fourth down and three, and for the first time, we'll see the Longhorn punting unit out there. Excellent coverage by the Aggie defense down the field. Uh, Ash was looking for Mike Davis on a slant route, and there was a linebacker in the way, and then a, a safety sitting over top of it. He had no choice but to pull that one down. See Anthony Fair is going to do the place kicking and the punting. Texas has had three opportunities to third down and missed the ball. This is ripped inside the 20 inside the 10 and to a one <laughs> Bryson Eccles down there at the one yard line to down it it's impossible to do that any better 68 yards this is a great special teams play and I watch Eccles he didn't see the ball until it bounced right in front of him so I'm going to say a fortuitous bounce for Eccles and then a great reaction afterwards. I wonder if he heard the bounce. Possible. It's possible. Although I believe he saw it. So now the football is actually inside the one yard line. So Andrew McDonald. And you know what? Did they switch quarterbacks? Is that Davis out there or is that McDonald? New Mexico State has told us they were going to bring in this promising freshman King Davis. McDonald and Texas has to hustle. Look at this. They're not ready to go. The ball's been spotted, set, and they, I, if I'm McDonald, I stand up and I throw it out to my receiver on the left side because there's nobody there. Instead, he saw, took the conservative route, second down and nine. So it is McDonald. I didn't think they would bring the freshman in in that situation, but you never know. This is Morrison, and he busts through one tackle. Jeffco brings him down to the six-yard line, so at least they cleared that out. Gain of four, third, and about five to go. One thing the Texas defense has to start doing is getting their calls in there and getting set up sooner. The pace right now that the Aggies are trying to run on Texas is having an effect. They're not lined up, ready to go. Six straight runs for the Aggies. Donald from the end line. It is going to be completed after the 13 yard line and a first down. Second catch of the night for Scoggins. See, Jenkins has the man to man coverage, and Paris Scoggins, the bigger man, used that extra size to push off to get a little separation from Jenkins. What an enormous third down conversion for New Mexico State. And McDonald will keep it. Cuts inside the 15, gets about four yards, second down and six. Another tackle by Cedric Reed for the Longhorns. How do you think Texas has done, Ray, so far with missed tackles? A big well, problem last that's year. That's the first one I saw in the ball game. It was that that swing and a miss right there by Peter Jenkins. Texas second in the Big 12 last year, averaging 8.6 missed tackles a ball game. You want to cut that in half. 
call it second and seven. Donald has a little room if he can get loose. He's got a lot of room. He's got a first down, doesn't slide, and is dumped by Thompson, but not until he gets out to the 31-yard line and gets some praise from his head coach. That's a gain of 14. And what you have here is man-to-man -man coverage. And because of that, there's nobody home here on the back side. Once McDonald breaks that little uh, tackle attempt, there's nobody there. Donald has 33 yards in five attempts. 30 seconds almost left in this first quarter. Catch made by Joshua Bowen. He'll get outside the 35-yard line. Tackled by Adrian Phillips, the senior from Garland. Gain of eight, however, going to be second down in a couple. Nice job closing to the ball there by Adrian Phillips. Texas had three defenders, and the Aggies only had two blockers, so... All Phillips had to do was hit the gas pedal and run inside out and make a good open field tackle, and that's what he did. And New Mexico State is content to let the game clock run out. And at the end of one quarter, got to be a little bit surprised by this result. Texas at home against the New Mexico State team. They won only one game last year. Manny Diaz's defense has done well. Mac Brown's got to find a fire under his offense and quickly. A lot of places you can go by and get a bite to eat a local beverage listen to little Stevie Ray and be all set in a rude mood for Austin Texas it's been a rude first quarter for the Longhorns Doug Martin a head coach there for New Mexico State and one of the people he talked quite a bit about was the strength conditioning coach Don Decker and what an impact he has had in a short period of time and that could be one of the reasons why the Aggies are hanging in here after one quarter with no score McDonald, a little flip pass. Texas read it well, but bouncing off the tight end. That's a missed tackle. You see the size of that was Andrew Dean, number 89. Four-yard pickup that time. It'll be second down and six. And it was Carrington Bindham who was trying to make that tackle, and he's only 180 pounds going after a guy that's a good 45, 55 pounds heavier than him. How about McDonald's hit on his last six passes? That's going to be a first down. He's been impressive. After the, the initial play in the game where they got a delay, since that time, he's been pretty solid. They'll hang on to it here, and he has an edge. Dean with a great block, and McDonald will get hit right at the 50-yard line by Adrian Phillips to go to the field, and Kaylee. Dave, you can't out-train poor nutrition. That's what Don Decker told me his philosophy is when working with this New Mexico State team. It's not just about the position, specific workouts he has them enrolled in in the weight room. It's also about what they're eating. Their nutrition has been such an integral component of building this New Mexico State team. All right, second down at two. Thank you, Kaylee. And on a hot day like this, temperatures in Austin today right around 100 in the middle of the day. Ninth play of the drive coming up. But again, Las Cruces is not exactly a cool in the summertime. There went the completions. There went another swat. And this time, it's Quandre Diggs caught yeah. the corner, coming on a corner blitz here. As you see him show up right now, right in front of your screen, and he just times it perfectly. And guys are starting to realize that more and more, Dave, as they rush the quarterback. If you're not going to get there, then get your hands up and knock that ball down. And I, I take it to J.J. Watt of the Houston Texans has kind of opened a lot of eyes with 16 of them last year. That's why I call them swats. Third and two. Donald under some pressure. Gets it off. It's going to be another first down. Once again, Andrew Dean, the big tight end out of Camarillo, tackled by Peter Jenkins. That's a gain of five, and the Aggies keep the football. And they list Dean at 235. Here's the big fella right here. I, I'm, I'm wondering which leg they were weighing because he looks a lot bigger than that. Just a little cell route inside, uh, twirling it back outside, and the play action kept Jenkins held in there. No play action for McDonald under pressure. No problem. It's Dean again. And he's shouldered out of bounds by Jackson Jeffcoat at around the 38-yard line. So that's a gain of six. 
That one might leave a mark there. Jeff Coat came and put a big hit on Dean. He said, all right, big fella, you've been running over the littler guys. Here comes a bigger guy to match up and uh, give you a little knock for yourself. Eight of the last nine for McDonald. You know what? I think Dean can take it, though. Old-fashioned option, McDonald on the key. Bump of the football! Diggs trying to fall on it for Texas. Looks like he's got it at around the 30-yard line. Reggie Wilson forced the fumble, and it's going to be Longhorn football. Great play by Reggie Wilson coming down the line and then realizing, ha having the, the sense to see the ball out there. Here comes McDonald. Now, he doesn't have that ball put away. He's running option, and he never does take it and tuck it in one arm he just keeps it seated in in his paunch there and by the time wilson gets there he's able to knock it away and then Diggs tried to pick it up and run with it at first he dribbled it a couple times said you know what i'm just going to fall on this one now we'll see how new mexico state responds this is a deflating moment when they had all the momentum in the game we'll see how the longhorns can reset and go to jonathan gray number 32 tailback he'll get it a little bit of a seam gets out to the 35 yard line to be about four yards short of a first down. It'll be second down and four to go on a hot, hot day in Austin, Texas. Just want to correct myself. I believe Steve Edmonds is the one who knocked that fumble out on that last play. He had a hand in there as well. On second and four, Ash. Nice catch by Shipley. He does have such wonderful hands. Knocked out of bounds on the Longhorn sideline for a first down by Darian Johnson. That's a gain of nine yards. That's a guy you need involved in your offense as much as possible. The leading receiver from last year. Get him the football. There's the gray underneath. You can see that develop. Juggling catch. He hangs on. And into New Mexico State territory. Pickup of nine. Second down and one coming up. Tackle by Bernard. And they're going fast again, David. And they, as long as they don't put the ball on the ground, this offense can go this fast. Nash looked deep downfield. Went through his progressions and goes underneath to Shipley. That's another first down for the Longhorns after a gain of five. Watch David Ash in his head position. Watch it. He's looking. Down the middle of the field, nothing there. He knows where to dump it off. That's a veteran quarterback right there. Quickly out of space. This is Johnson. Johnson. Oh, if he had broken that tackle, it might have been a show. He's down to the 35-yard line. Now it's a gain of seven. Texas getting him in chunks. Bonilla with the tackle. It's going to be second down and three. Finally, you get a sense this Texas offense is developing some rhythm. You haven't seen that until this drive. See the spot to snap, only 14 seconds there. And it's going to go deep in the end zone. Chipley's down there, and it's overthrown. Good coverage that time by Darian Johnson, a senior from Fontana, California. Third down and three. Darian Johnson has played well, but, you know, you're going to take a look at it. Just man-to-man -man on the outside, a little stop and go. And Darian Johnson had such a big cushion, there was no way that one was going to work doomed from the start. Longhorns are 0 for 3 in third downs. Last year, they hit 49%. We have whistles. Looks like we're going to have an Aggies timeout. I think that's a fatigue timeout right there. That leaves them with just one for the remainder of the first half. Here's your score in time on the Longhorn Network. Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont, and Kaylee Hartung on the sidelines. After the game wraps up, stay tuned for Texas Game Day Final, powered by Chevy Silverado. You can also watch online and now on your mobile phone for the Longhorn Network app. It's available free in the Apple App Store. So the Longhorns on the drive. Their first drive ended in a fumble. They were on their way in, and so it seemed. The 34 and 33, Jonathan Gray up the middle, lowered the shoulder, and delivered a hit. He's finally going to be dropped down by Anthony Edwards and others. Gray says, what do you mean? I was never down. But it's going to be a 10-yard gain and a first down for the Longhorns. Trey Hopkins with a great block. Watch watch uh, big number 75 come across here and push his guy right out of the play. I don't think that knee ever did touch. 
But the whistle blew, and that's going to end it all. Ash looking end zone. Stutter steps, and a good tackle in open field that time by the middle linebacker, Clint Bernard. Stops him after a four-yard gain. It'll be second down and six. Clint Bernard is an interesting story. He played at a D2 program, walked on, played eight-man football in high school. And they said he just keeps showing up, showing up, making plays, earned a starting spot. And he's from Melrose, New Mexico. Population, 700. Down the sideline, wide open, Davis, and oh, an interception. Is he in bounds? What a play by George Callender to pick that off. Davis was open, and Callender read it to steal the ball and get a second Aggies turnover if this play holds up. That was an error by David Ash. That's one you have to put some pace on and hit it before that safety gets over there. You kind of put a little too much air under the football. I, think, I believe that's going to stand. Yeah, you saw the foot go down in the end zone. Yeah, we kind of floated that ball. That's one yeah. where you got to put a little smoke on it to avoid exactly this. Is it possible, Ray, he just didn't see Calendar? I think that is exactly the problem with it. The Aggies are getting excited over there. And why wouldn't they? Again, let's talk about it. They had nine turnovers forced by their defense last year. This is the second one in the first half of this game. They had four games, Dave, where they didn't force a single turnover. Now, I would like to know about the spot of the ball because you see the foot come down here. That's in the end zone. That, in my mind, would be a touchback. At the moment, the ball is spotted inside the one-yard line. And the, the back end of the ball has to come out of the end zone for them to mark it in the field of play. Not the nose, the back end, the Tim whole ball. Is challenging the call that it would be a touchback. And we will find out what the decision is from the replay booth when we return. And David Ash talking it over. Major Apple right there, the dark shirt. They were talking just before we came back, and here's why they're unhappy. Here is the ruling on the field from our referee, Cooper Castleberry. After the replay booth took a look during our break, they ruled this a touchback. The ball was caught in the end zone in New Mexico State, and their new quarterback for the afternoon, maybe for the rest of the night, King Davis III, a freshman from Mesquite, takes over. He'll begin with a handoff to Jeremy Morrison. No gain on the play. Stopped by Jordan Hicks. It'll be second down and 10. What about Davis, Ray? He is an exciting athlete. Uh, throws the ball extremely well. Spins it very nicely. Is able to run. He just is an awful green. You know, his progressions are number one. You know, you look at your primary. It's one and run for him. That's it. I expect to see some fireworks before he's done. It wasn't as if Andrew McDonald played poorly, but Davis was going to get some playing time tonight. How much remains a mystery. They'll get a yard there, and that's going to be all. You see Malcolm Brown, number 90, and another tackle by Cedric Reed, number 88. So it's going to be third down and nine. We might get to see Davis go through his progressions right here. Well, he missed a read right there, as he should have pitched that ball. That was a very easy read. I, I, however, I think he wanted to hold that ball and cradle it and nurse it and carry it and take a hit one time to get that, that blood flowing and get things going here for himself. You see McDonald, number 12. Kept his hat on, staying in the game. New Mexico State, 50% so far on third down. And they tried a trick play to snap it to the incoming. Uh, maybe not. No. Maybe Jordan Bergstrom just got in the way. Sometimes you see that snap. That's like an old Bobby Bowden deal. That's but on uh, the young quarterback again. Yeah. He, he, watch his hand. He's going to shoot his hand out. That tells the center when to snap it. He went too early. And because of that, yeah. Bertram gets a uh, ear hold with the football. I gave them too much credit for running a trick play. That, that was just a, a mess up. Yeah, that was tricksy, all right. <laughs> and that's going to bring in our punter, Cale Chapman Brown. And the Jay Johnson now stepping out at the 40 yard line for his first punt return of the night. Lefty. Have a funny spin on this one. And Johnson trying to create. 
something out of nothing. Didn't do a bad job at all. That's about a nine-yard return out to the 45-yard line following the 43-yard punt. That had an awkward spin on it. So we'll see how the Longhorns can recover. Their offense has turned the ball over twice in the first half. Mac Brown on the left side of your screen is two coordinators at work trying to figure out what's going on. The coaching staff for Texas is into it right now because they're having issues with the miscues in this ball game. It started out early in the first drive, the fumble by Mike Davis. That stopped that drive. Then you get a fourth down and they aren't able to convert there. Then David Ash can't handle the lower snap. And then the defense doesn't get out on the field in time. You know, all these things happening and then the interception by calendar and a lot of problems right now across the board for the Longhorn squad. So they go to this pod package and they hand it off to DeJay Johnson. He cuts back at the 45 and into New Mexico State territory. First, we've been here several times before. That's about a seven yard pickup. And the Aggies top returning tackler from last year, Davis Cazares, number 31, on the stop. And here's a, a graph look at the miscues tonight, the two drops, penalties, pre-snap, the turnovers, that's the, the huge one. As Texas has stopped themselves tonight. Bill Bergeron now in a tailback, and they pitch it to Johnson, and what oh, tremendous loss at the 45-yard line, and a little bit of a dance, and that might even get a flag by Treshawn Nixon. That was pretty close to taunting. No flag, however, by the officials, but it's now going to be third down. Ever loss of five, they're going to need ten again. Uh, Nixon, nobody blocked Nixon, and so I don't know if you're going to dance when you don't get blocked. Maybe if you beat a block, make a play, a tackle for a loss, that might call for a dance. I was surprised they left that go without a penalty. Ash, third long, right to the mark. Davis, that'll be a first down. It's a coach for the Aggies who's extremely unhappy about something. Here's the dance. Well, that's a different kind of dance going on right there between Callender and Davis. Aggies a little feisty. There's a slot intercepted. A third turnover as Bernard picks it up. That is the third time the Longhorns have turned the ball over in this half. That pass was deflected in New Mexico State again. And a tale of two sidelines. Look at the two sidelines and the emotion of the crowd. All the emotion in that little knot on the far side. And here, louder note right going to see in the nose guard just working 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 but he gets the hand up late you got to keep your eyes on the quarterback as you rush the passer that's the key to getting a swat and when you swat the ball up in the air good things usually happen for the defense so from their own 36 yard line back in a quarterback is Andrew McDonald under some pressure hung in throws Good hit by Diggs, but not until a first down by Jarrell Brown, a junior from Inglewood, California, just outside of Los Angeles. Has a gain of 17 and into Longhorn territory at the 47. And Manny Diaz has decided that he's going to try to heat up this offense right now. He's bringing blitzes in a much more uh, regular fashion than when this game started. It's amazing that we are now more than halfway through the second quarter without anyone reaching the end zone. That time the coordination a lot better on the play. They go to Bettencourt. He'll get across the 45 to the 44. Short gain of three. Second down and seven coming up. They brought Michael Thompson, the free safety, down in a blitz look on that particular play. I, I just think that's what Manny needs to do. You've got to make a big play to turn this momentum on right now from your defense. Texas defense has played well. It's the Longhorns offense that has put many Diaz's defense in a bad spot. They go away from it, though, but out in space and a nice move that time by Joshua Bowen. One on one, he gains five, just a couple of yards short of the first down. And Adrian Phillips is going to miss a tackle here. And he's got a nice line to see how he breaks down too far away from the ball carrier. You've got to get up into him and then break down or don't break down at all and just take a shot. Third and they're going to call it a yard. Morrison back in the tailback number 25. They're going to go through the air. And 
will be a first down catch made by Bergstrom as he's driven out of bounds in front of the Texans, right in front of Manny Diaz, as a matter of fact, after a gain of four. Andre Diggs blitzed again off of the slot right there, and an excellent read and recognition by Andrew McDonald. When you got that blitz coming off the edge from the slot, all you got to do is throw behind it. If you get it past that guy, the coverage is coming from a safety who's back 10 yards away. You're going to be able to get the ball out there on time and make the play in McDonald if you recognize it, and he has. This could be a trick play with Bettencourt. Looked like he wanted to throw the football, tucks it, and runs against inside the 30. And that's going to be all about, about an eight-yard gain. Reggie Wilson on the stop. I wonder if they were trying to throw it to McDonald. Yeah, no doubt they were. They were trying to go to the backside, but the Texas uh, defense, the secondary, they did their job. They, they hung in there, they had the coverage, and they forced him to put it under his arm and run with it. It's like he ran into Shiro Davis, number one, getting some playing time in the defensive end position, but it's still gonna be second and two. Down to the 15-yard line, that's gonna be a completion by Scoggins. The tight ends are the, what they call the wide position for New Mexico State playing well. That's a gain of a dozen. And what, what happens here is they're not getting anything on the tight end. You let the tight end free release right there like that, and nobody even touches him? Man, that's easy pickings. Stumbles around a little bit and fell forward for most of that yardage. He still is going to pick up about five. Wilson kind of tripped him up there. It'll be second and five. Yeah, that actually should have been a penalty on Reggie Wilson because that's tripping. You're not allowed to do that. You can't just shoot your legs out and tackle a guy. But that's exactly what Reggie did, and he got away with it. New Mexico State has run 10 more plays and gained 26 more yards and had the ball for what's going to be 10 more minutes here by the time they snap it. Coming out late to the field as Birch from number 11 sets up in the slot. They're going to call it second down and six. McDonald gets hit once, gets hit twice, and fights for a yard. It'll be third and five. Jordan Hicks, number three, finally put a halt to that play. And I notice here, Ray, the hurry-up philosophy for New Mexico State is on, on hiatus. Yeah, I think they established what they wanted to with that. Uh, just getting their blood flowing, getting things going. And now that they're in the red zone, they're actually doing a great job of changing the play. Greg Brandon watching from up, upstairs, seeing what's going on, making that change. They're getting it from the sideline, and they're executing. Heavy pressure from the edges. McDonald lobs one toward the end zone, and it's caught in the back of the end zone for a touchdown by Joshua Bowen. That's unbelievable throw. Excuse me, Dave. That is McDonald's first Division I touchdown pass. First Division I touchdown for Joshua Bowen. And a stunning start with 2.28 to go that New Mexico State has the first touchdown. And Doug Martin had to be a salesman as much as a coach in Las Cruces, yeah. Ray. And at the moment, the sales pitch is working. Bit of a stunned crowd to say the least. Perfect throw. Pretty good coverage, but a better catch by Joshua Bowen. The pressure is on the Longhorns offense to respond. On Saturday, the Longhorn football team travels to Provo, Utah for its first away game of the season against BYU. You can catch the director's chair edition of the game with multiple angles of the action exclusively on LA Jam. Coverage begins at 4 Central with Texas Game Day, the Texas BYU director's chair edition at 6 Central, both on Longhorn Network. And for those Longhorn fans who are going to make that trip, you'll find it to be very pretty. Well, New Mexico State kicking off for the first time. It will be a shorty keeping it away from the Texas speed. Up man will take it. And Texas has speed everywhere, apparently, as that's Dalton Santos taking it back into great field position. 
after a 23 yard return but how about McDonald Ray on that drive five for five 48 yards yeah let's take a look at the touchdown here's his receiver right there Bowen there's Mikael Thompson he's got the coverage you're gonna get two inside routes to create a little bit of a pick and then that corner route right here watch this thing develop and then it takes the perfect throw because Thompson's on the coverage he just never gets his head back around and doesn't get his hand between the two uh, the hands of the receiver and I tell you what uh, McDonald paid for that one bind him put him on his back, but he'll pay that price anytime On point to hurt themselves with three turnovers they go short here Catch made by Jeff Swain the junior from Chico, California for gain of three It'll be second down and seven long range do have all of their timeouts in this half Away. Opportunity here for John Harris. Touchdown, Texas. That's David Ash learning a lesson from that interception he threw the calendar. Very similar route right here. And instead of him floating the ball, he zips it in. Watch him throw a dart here. A fastball right Bam, tight right there. He gets it before the safety's able to come over the top. And then after that, it's just turn on the Jets for Mr. Harris. Let's not forget to credit the kickoff return by the up man, Dalton Santos. The 23-yard return took that from the 20 to the 43, gave Texas great field position. And in a matter of mere moments, they have tied this game up and brought the cheer back to the sellout crowd here at DKR. John Harris, only two catches last year. He starts 2013 memorably. Talk about David Ash throwing down the field more often. You talked, Ray, about his pocket presence. And also, he learned from his mistake on the interception of the drive before. That's key, Dave, because it was a very similar route, opposite side of the field. And this time, he, he put some smoke on the ball and kept it away from that safety, and you saw the result. So Nick Rose talked about how powerful his leg has been. He doesn't make it very exciting for the other return team. Joseph Matthews, Brandon Bentford awaiting. going to be fumbled that's actually Adam Shapiro he works his way out and he'll get it out to the 24 yard line a bad return at all all right take us through the TD all right first of all you're gonna have John Harris is right down here the safety that he's really kind of working against right there is Anthony Edwards watch Edwards he's gonna go ahead and kind of bite with his eyes first of all and move to the straight back and he doesn't open up and then he comes flat across and that creates the room and then the pass by David Ash was thrown on a line that's exactly what he needed he learned his lesson and the result is the first six points of this season for the Longhorns so now the challenge back to Andrew McDonald the Aggies have just one timeout how aggressive will New Mexico State be the answer at least based on this play not very Morrison now if you're Texas do you think about calling timeouts I absolutely I would use one right now um, I'm surprised that Matt Brown is oh he is good absolutely use those timeouts get your offense a chance there they seem to be heated up humming a little bit get them the ball back if you can and one other note uh, that's the I believe fifth play in a row Manny Diaz has dialed up a blitz he's done changed his mind about that well, you just saw Mac Brown on the field for a moment. You can watch Mac Brown, too, at the podium for all the latest news on the team. You can hear right from the man himself on the Mac Brown press conference Monday at 11 a.m. exclusively on Longhorn Network. You can also watch live online and now on your mobile phone with either the Longhorn Network app, with the Longhorn Network app, I should say, available free in the Apple App Store. Yeah, throwing it back at the offense is what Texas is doing with the blitzes and with the timeouts. It's going to force New Mexico State to maybe get out of the shell a little bit. Hit them again. And Donald keep now, no chance there. And he's not going to win the matchup with Jackson Jeff go very often. No game. 
And that's just a, a solid read by Jackson Jeff Cody. Kept his shoulders square, uh, parallel with the line of scrimmage. And because of that, he's able to take uh, both away the run, that handoff, the fake there on this read option, and also take care of the quarterback. That's excellent technique. Yeah, Jeff Coe didn't play very much last year at all. And of course, Texas lost the talent, some great talent on defense. Losing Caro, losing Acho, losing Okafor. Okafor went to the Arizona Cardinals and is still with them. Acho a couple of years back, I should say. And um, the, the Kenny Vaccaro lost their leading tackler from last year. He was the 15th pick of the draft. That's how highly he was regarded. And Jackson Jeffcoat may well be a first day player when his career is finished in Texas. He has five tackles already tonight. Blitz, they go underneath to the bubble. One tackle broken, but not enough. Well short of the first down. Brown made the catch. So two yard gain there. Fourth down. Texas takes their final timeout with a minute and 23 to go. Steve Edmond did a nice job. When you get a little screen uh, play like that, you want to coop and contain. So the uh, the one outside backer was Edmond. Even though he missed, he forced it back inside where Jordan Hicks was waiting to go ahead and finish it off. It's good work by the, the group of linebackers together. Well, Cale Chapman Brown becomes the most important to Mexico State Aggie at the moment. The left-footed punter from Sydney, Australia, punted 70 times last year. Michael Thompson almost blocked the first punt of the ball game here today. Let's keep an eye on him, see if Texas is going to go after this thing. Hey, watch out for that guy right there, too, to Jay Johnson. And Mexico State has the unusual misfortune of punting more often than any team in the last seven years. No pressure this time. They play for the return. This is rocked. Fair catch, 33-yard line. 38 yards on the punt. Well, let's review put the eyes of the Longhorn Network on David Ash and his evening so far. He started out a little rough, Dave, as, as we saw. You know, he's had a trouble handing him the football, throws this interception, and boy, you know, it ain't going good for him. What does he do, though? He hangs in there. Here's the other pick on a tip ball. But he learned from his mistakes. And then on this next similar type play, he throws a strike to Harris. And to see him overcome the adversity like that, that's what they need from David Ash. That is leadership. Bergeron on the backfield. Play action fake to him. Ash sees the blitz throw. He's got a man right there. That's Johnson. 35-30. There's the speed to Jay Johnson. Can they catch him? No, they can't. Touchdown, Texas. One of the few times the Aggies decided to blitz tonight, and they got burnt trying it. The Jay Johnson to the house, and David Ash has done heated up. Here it is. You see just a little token play action, and then a strike. But the corner is way too far off there. That's Cameron Fuller. And when Johnson gets the ball in open space, forget about it. I guess the thing is you don't want him getting behind you, so you play off, but if he gets in front of you, he can still beat you with that kind of speed. Yeah, it's a fine line. You know, they had a guy underneath actually playing it, too, because they blitzed uh, the other safety and a linebacker up the middle. And so they did try to have one underneath, one over the top, uh, but Ash shows the perfect pass, and then Johnson just splits him, and then with the speed, he runs away. Well, that is two incredibly quick drives for Texas. And what a good night for David Ash. Two picks and now two touchdown throws. And the Jay Johnson, there's the speed. Now, this is a sophomore from Pflugerville. His name kept coming up in those coaches' meetings and coming up, and you knew that they, that they knew what they had. That's the guy that wanted to get the ball in his hands, and you just saw why right there. Now nothing but smiles on the sideline there between Major Applewhite and his quarterback, David Ash. There'll be a lot of those face-to-face -face meetings between those two all season long. One of the reasons, and Mac Brown has talked about it all in offseason, he played the position. He played the position here. He understands the demands of Texas football, and I want him down there communicating with my quarterback. You mentioned Mac Brown. A great decision, him using the timeouts to create the opportunity for the offense. Big up opportunity again here, Shapiro at the 10. And they'll get it out to the 20-yard line. So with no timeout, but for New Mexico State, for Texas, I should say, New Mexico State having just one, they may just try to run a play or two and get out of here. 
You, know, you mentioned Major Applewhite, a former quarterback here. Uh, he has been in those shoes, and he's been successful in those shoes. So who better than him to mentor uh, a current Longhorn quarterback? And not only him, but Vince Young was here in the offseason getting his degree, and he spent time with David Ash. And, and uh, I believe Colt McCoy was, also yeah. has a relationship. He came with David down to, Ash. Get, to get ready for uh, San Francisco and for the NFL and spent some time. Absolutely. The guy's paying back the program. Always good. Stepped out of bounds, a catch made there by Jerome Brown. So just when you thought New Mexico State might go ahead and just take the seven point deficit into the locker room, they may try to move the ball here. Gain of eight, second and two. Well, they want to be careful to not uh, have this thing. They played such a great first half. You don't want to take any chances on letting Texas get another opportunity at points before this, this half runs out. And they run the fake on the throw and go to Betancourt, who gets right to the mark at the 31-yard line. Another tackle for Cedric Reed. He and Jeff Cook from those defensive end positions, 88 and 44 respectively, have been strong. Game two. Waiting to see if the officials are going to call it a first down or not. They had called it a first down. It would have changed it would be the sideline, safest place to go. And once again, another catch by Brown. He smartly got the ball out of bounds. That's about a six yard pickup. Bind him on coverage that time. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, Greg Brandon is, is living dangerously right now. And Doug Martin might want to tell him, hey, don't do anything too crazy here. McDonald, pocket collapsing. Under pressure, he hung in there and got off a decent throw to Jordan Bergstrom. Stopping the clock with 34 seconds to go. It's third and four. This is nice movement in the pocket here. You see McDonald get away from the rush and then reset. His eyes never went away from being downfield looking for receivers. A lot, of, a lot of young quarterbacks, they see the rush coming, they, they get their eyes on that, and that becomes a, a mistake. This is his first start at the Division I level. McDonald last year was one for three with three yards in the game against the Ohio Bobcats. They go on the ground. Betancourt actually ran into his own man that time, does not get the first down. It will be fourth and a couple. But that will also be undoubtedly the end of the half. Yeah, no, don't have to snap it again. Texas is out of timeouts, so they're going to let this one roll. You know, be interesting that the messages between these two coaches, Ray. If you're Doug Martin right there, what is your message to your team at halftime? Well, you, you say, great job, fellas. That's what I'm talking about. Now let's keep this going because there's still 30 minutes left. Now on the other side, Mac Brown, hey, we woke up, guys. Now we got it going. You keep it positive there as well. Let's get down to the field and Kaylee. Dave, Coach Brown, what do you, how can you explain what David Ash learned from those early miscues that allowed him to execute those last two touchdown drives? Well, the first one was a great play by them. He's a little bit late on the throw, but they changed coverages right at the end. The second one was a guy that wasn't rushing. He hit his hand up, so it's just a very unfortunate thing. But you can't turn the ball over three times. Mike Davis hadn't been hit much with his injuries, so he's got to protect the ball better. And the three turnovers were the difference in the first half for us. What concerns you most about those three turnovers? That we had three turnovers and <laughs> we got to get rid of them all three of them caleb and i thought david came back had two great series they're wadding up the line of scrimmage we're gonna have to throw the ball uh we're trying to work on the running game some but uh we'll have to mix it in but uh there's a lot of passes out there to be had and we've got to keep throwing it and still play good defense thank you coach thank you. dave caleb thank you very much for the first 27 plays the longhorns at 136 yards the last two 120 and two touchdowns they have been tough enough so far the Longhorns with the lead. Studio will take it from here. 14-7, Texas at halftime on Longhorn Network. back to DKR the tower in Austin uh, and an interesting first half to say the least a lot of folks thought New Mexico State would be run back to Las Cruces in a matter of about five or six minutes but instead they led this game seven nothing until Texas caught fire with two big plays back to back 120 yards worth and the Longhorns took the lead into the dressing room with Ray Bentley I'm Dave Lamont we'll hear from Kaylee in a moment 
What an unusual half that was, particularly from the Longhorns' perspective. Yeah, it was kind of a combination of things. I think we, we documented the mistakes, the miscues that Texas had in that first half. Not only the turnovers, but also some drops, some penalties, some untimely things. But then they, all of a sudden they caught fire there at the end. And the other part of that, Dave, is you got to give the Aggies a bunch of credit because they flew around, they played almost error-free football, and have hung in here. And I don't know if they're going to go away here in the second half. We'll have to wait and see. And Doug Martin, his first game as the head coach of New Mexico State after a year at Boston College. They start with an onside kick. Unbelievable. Do they have it, though? Let's see what the officials decide as they come in to separate the bodies. How about that for a bold start? That is what you call coming in here to try and win a ball game and steal one. And a great decision. It didn't work, as you see. But why not? Benson on the recovery. Well, that thing was loose for a little while there. But if you're going to try and win, especially on the road when you're overmatched, you got to make some plays. You got to take some chances. Roll the dice like that. And Doug Martin, he rolled them. Fortunately, it didn't work out for him. And you know what? You take a look at that record from last year, 1 and 11. Why not bring your dice with you on the team plane? David Ash starts it off with a completion to Jackson Shipley. He's out of bounds to the 43 yard line. And now, after all that drama, here's Kelly Hartung. Dave, you cannot overstate the impact that those three forced turnovers by New Mexico State had in this game and for the Aggies. I spoke with Coach Doug Martin. He has said all along he wants this team to play fast and physical with emotion and discipline, and that's what they've done. Those turnovers illustrated that. Thank you, Kaylee. That's going to be another catch for Jackson Shipley. Darian Johnson on the stop, but first down for the Longhorns. You know, Mac, uh, when he talked, spoke with Kaylee at the half there, he said, we're going to have to throw the football. They're going to have to throw to set up the run, and that's exactly what they've come out here to do thus far. Pistol T formation. Play action fake to Johnson. Ash is looking deep down the field. He'll elude the rush. Nice running by David Ash in a crowd. Out of bounds and around the 33-yard line. We do have a Longhorn player behind the play injured. That is the tight end, Jeff Swain. And another player for New Mexico State lost a helmet. That's Clint Bernard, their talented middle linebacker. He will have to come out. Swain throws an incredible block on this. Takes out two guys after he sees his quarterback scramble. Right here he is, right in front of you. Right there, watch. Bam! He takes out two. <laughs> and it, it cost him a little bit. Knocked him a little woozy as he's getting helped off the field. But he threw a warm whale of a block. Something to note here, Dylan Davis, number 32, is in at line, middle linebacker. Now, as you take one more look, that is... There it is. That's two for one Ooh. special right and there. That's why the helmet came off. And that puts 32, Dylan Davis, into the game. And we'll see the senior from Ventura, California, for the first time a middle linebacker for the Yankees. Straight ahead. And inside the 30 to the 28-yard line goes the sophomore, Jonathan Gray, for a gain of five, second and five. Coming up, Willie Mobley on the stop. Now, excuse me, that's the first down. Game six, first and ten. over there. Excuse me, Dave. Getting a little attention. That's one of those where the concussion syndrome, the symptoms from that, is what they're looking at him about. Well, talk. Mac Brown mentioned me yesterday. He said, "You know, I, I don't know how he's going to react. This will be his first time out of the tunnel in this stadium. Hundred thousand people walking through the smoke. I don't know what he's going to do." Well, I guess pretty good indication right there. Johnson. He'll get inside the 25 for the 24-yard line. Second and six coming up after the gain of four. That formation is, uh, Mac Brown called it a pod for us when we talked to him, to him about it. He said you can, they can do it not only in the backfield like they have right here. Here's your pod. They can also move that out and, and do different things with it. But it's great for running the football and then play action. Johnson again, he's got Gray as the lead blocker. Got a block, Johnson got the seal, and he's got six. Greg Daniels, who came in for Swain as the tight end, 
through the key block on the edge to make this thing happen. Here he is. You see him right there. Knocks down the contain man. Boy, you got good blocks all over the place. Uh, Donald Hawkins had his man. Took him for a nice long ride. Good stuff by that offensive line. Also, number one, Mike Davis was in there, too, to help with that seal. So Texas suddenly has been unstoppable after a very slow start on offense. They have scored on their last three possessions to take charge of this game. And for the second time tonight, the sophomore, to Jay Johnson, finds the end zone. Six play, 53 and 212, a 24-yard touchdown run. Could we be seeing a star born tonight in college football with the Jay Johnson? We were told he was going to see a lot of the football, Ray. 15.2 yards per touch. Yeah, I'd give it to him every play if, if that's what we're seeing here. And he is so good, so explosive. Just an incredible athlete. And then he has the, the gift of the vision to see where he has to go and then the gas pedal to get there. Two touchdowns tonight. One a long pass. Much of it yards after catch. And then that 24-yarder, which, by the way, was blocked perfectly that looked like a practice play that was blocked so well here with the one and a 25 to the 30 yard line take a look at another this this touchdown here a little inside handoff the block by Jonathan Gray right there knocks the corner Cameron Fuller right off of his feet also got the outstanding block from Greg Daniels who was also lined up in the backfield and Superman unveils you know sometimes coaches tell us something and it doesn't quite happen and you kind of get a little cynical oh they're just <laughs> no Mac Brown and Major Applewhite could not stress enough how much playing time and how much of the ball Johnson was going to see tonight how do the Aggies respond McDonald pump fake open receiver and a chance here for New Mexico State to get some yards is Joseph Matthews. A junior out of Tucson took advantage of a missed tackle and gets a first down. Here you're going to see just the route coming up by Matthews. Just gets behind the corner and sits down, keeping himself away from the safety, Adrian Phillips. And then Phillips took a bad angle, and Matthews was able to shake that tackle. 27-yard gain. They go to the right again with a pass. And again, good blocking downfield by Matthews as Bowen is the beneficiary of that and in two plays the Aggies have gotten it all the way down to the Texas 21. That's a, a great job of blocking by Matthews. First he runs behind him off and then he locks up in front of him for the run behind him. Well now in case anybody thought the Aggies were going to fold maybe not. Greg Brandon is an excellent play caller and we've seen some real doozies tonight. Brown looks left under pressure, and that'll be incomplete. Wasn't going to gain anything anyway. Joshua Bowen was hit right away by Quandre Diggs. As Cedric Reed makes this play, he's been dominant throughout the, the evening, and Dada Richards has not been able to handle him. As Reed forced that throw to be wobbly, and that gave Diggs the time to close and make a hit. Middle of the field. Is it an interception? Waiting for the ruling. If it's going to be a pick by Adrian Phillips or it's going to be an incomplete pass, and it's ruled an interception. I'm sure this will be looked at and reviewed, but right now, this is exactly what the Texas defense ordered. Because the Aggies have been driving it down the field. Right here is Thompson up here. Or, excuse me, Phillips. I think he caught it. Got his hands underneath that thing. Another look. No buzz from the replay booth. Yeah, his hands were underneath that. That's a good catch. Got away with a little uh, wrap around the stomach on Matthews, but he got his hands underneath this. Well, the, even though it, it seemed to appear to have touched the ground, his left hand was underneath the football. Phillips had two interceptions last year, the senior from Garland. And here comes the expected Ooh. buzz down from the booth. Yeah, that last look right there might have uh, changed my view on this.
So Don Caprell is the replay official. He'll take a look at this while we step aside. Cooper Castleberry is the man on the left. He's the referee. You see, of course, the two head coaches there. And we'll decide here, Ray Bentley, what do you think? We've had a lot of looks at it. I don't know, man. You know what? Every look I saw, I'm convinced he caught the ball. You see his left hand uh, securely underneath the ball. But then you look at this one and watch the tip of the football right there. It appears to be on the ground. But I say he caught it. All right. Here is Cooper Castleberry. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down. And, that, and of course, there's always a coded language with replay. Ruling on the field stands means we can't find enough evidence to overturn it. Confirmed means we were right all along. So it's yeah. going to be Texas football after the interception by Adrian Phillips. She'll take over at the 12 yard line. You got to kind of add those different looks up and then try to determine, you know, what happened. And it's hard to do. And when you can't do it, with, you know, the standard is indisputable. Video evidence that one had to stay. Malcolm Brown gets the time and tailback. He has a football right now. He's going to pick up maybe a yard, and that's going to be all second down and nine. It has been a tale of two offenses for Texas so far tonight. See the first five drives hurt by the turnovers. They've they've evened it. Three and three. And David Ash has shown once again he can rise from the ashes. That same formation he scored the touchdown on. Johnson again. Well, he spun right into the arms of Davis Cazares, the top tackler last year for the Aggies. Not much of a game there. Third down and eight coming up. Cazares has been relatively silent tonight. Uh, that was a, a good example of how he plays football, though. I mean, he butted up Johnson and just took care of business, finished that tackle with the leg drive, uh, his face mask in the chest of the ball carrier. That's a textbook right there. Green here for the middle. Got some room with Brown to the 30-yard line. Malcolm Brown breaks in, and he's knocked down, tripped up by Cazares, but not until a big gain all the way out to the Texas 45-yard line of 30 yards. Watch the defensive line is just going to rush upfield. They never recognize screen. You got three guys running after the quarterback and another one on the ground, and that offensive line got out there and took care of business. Ash went deep. Now he's just going to take off, and he's got room. He's got a first down. He's got a lot of yardage. Ash down the sideline. Gets a block from Shipley, and Ash will score. Jackson Shipley actually got two blocks, Dave. He, he knocked a couple of guys out of the way, and David Ash just kept running. He couldn't believe it was opening up in front of him, and he just ran down that sidelines for six quick. That one just snuck through, but David Ash, I think this spray was starting to be a pass play, but Ash just tucked it. Yeah, he's looking to throw the football. Nothing there. He's does a great job with his vision to find the seam to scramble and watch Jackson Chipley get the two blocks there. He, he blocked uh, Darian Johnson and Davis Caceres. Here's watch uh, Shipley turn into from a receiver to a blocker. OK, I'm going to help my quarterback. And man, right there, a little double bump to clear the way. Well, it's been a big play night for David Ash. 54-yard touchdown pass, 66-yard touchdown pass, and now that 55-yard touchdown run. Let's go back to something, Ray, you said at the top of the show. For those who might have missed it, you think David Ash could be where in the Big 12 as quarterback? I think go? he's the best quarterback in the Big 12, and I think he's top five in the country, and I'm not sure who the other four are just yet. I think he's outstanding. He proved it at the end of the year last year, and then an amazing performance in the bowl victory in the Alamo Bowl where he was 9 of 11 with two touchdowns and a fourth quarter comeback where I think that settled him once and for all gave him the confidence and now it's just a matter of going out and turning it loose and playing and that's what he's done these last four drives that Alamo Bowl game has been talked about by the coaches as a major turning point they looked at it as the start of the 2013 season. 
dangerous run out here by Adam Shapiro. He'll get through the 20. He's a very effective kick returner to the 26-yard line. So for New Mexico State, about, what, 45 minutes ago in real time, this game was looking pretty good for them. They were up 7 to nothing. Texas was, at times, very clumsy on offense. It has gone the other way. How do you stop it? I, I'm not sure how you stop it because it has tipped big time. Um, what's happened to them is the depth of Texas has started to uh, take effect in this ball game, and the Aggies uh, are getting worn out a little bit. And then the other part of that is the Texas offense is no longer stopping themselves. They're, <laughs> they're executing. Yeah, 28 nothing run over just a dozen plays. McDonald again going to the right. Again, another tight end, Andrew Dean. He's been good tonight for New Mexico State. Short gain of about three. Sherrod Evans, the junior from Sugarland, knocks him out of bounds. Yeah, this is a key critical drive if the Aggies have any intentions uh, of making this a ball game, keeping this being a ball game here in the second half because Texas, the offense is on fire right now. The Aggies offense has to respond. And they were on their way to responding at one point at a, a fumble by McDonald who's going to end up being a huge play in this game. And this is Jeremy Morrison just short of the first down third down about a yard and a little bit more than that another tackle for 88 Cedric Reed and another missed tackle for the Longhorns as they have had too many Sherrod Evans was in the hole there and had a chance to get Morrison behind the line of scrimmage and Jeremy put a little move on umpire putting the, the halt the umpire posing for the Heisman there to match substitutions before you can snap. A lot of shuffling by the Longhorns. That pass behind the receiver, trying to get it to Bowen. Could not do it. Adrian Phillips was in coverage. A better pass, Bowen might have had that for the first down. Phillips closes so quickly. Explodes out of his back pedal. And boy, if he had his eyes around, he might have come up with uh, another interception there. So Quandre Diggs stands about the 29-yard line. Seems pretty good punts out of Kale, C A Y L E, Chapman Brown from Sydney, Australia. I was reading there's 15 punters in uh, Division uh, FBS football mm -hmm. that are from Australia. Pretty good kick. Diggs driven back inside the 20, and he'll take the fair catch at the 18 yard line. David Ash is suddenly on fire. Big plays with his arm and with his feet. He'll bring the Longhorns offense back out when we return to DKR on the Longhorns opener on the Longhorn Network. After the game wraps up, stay tuned. Those folks right there in that beautiful tent, get you ready. Texas game day final, powered by Chevy Silverado. You can also watch online and now on your mobile phone with the Longhorn Network app. You can find that for free in the Apple App Store. And we'd like to welcome our new friends from Time Warner Cable and all the customers there who have picked up the Longhorn Network in the last 24 hours. We're delighted to have you. With Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont. Kelly Hartung on the sidelines. A beautiful night in Austin. Yeah, it's warm, but it's, it's okay. At the end of August, of course, it's going to be hot here. Right, great night to paint up and come out to a football game. Students just got back in a few days ago. They're ready and roaring. And of course, you're always going to have the Longhorns faithful here to watch their Texas team against New Mexico State. A game Maggie squad so far, but it's getting out of their hands. Malcolm Brown, number 28, the tailback. And he's got one good block. Scored with his feet last time. And he gets flipped here. Nothing dirty about that. Cazares on the stop to gain a six, second and four. David Ash has really made a turnaround. You look at how he started the ball game with those two interceptions and uh, not a whole lot of production. And then since, he's been about perfect. On the ground, Brown sets his feet and runs right into the middle of the defense. And there is number 91, Calvin Cruz, a senior from Littleton, Colorado, not far outside of Denver, and there with a stop. Third down coming up there, and the Longhorns need three. This is a big down for the Aggie defense to get off the field. Ray, right, they've been getting off the field fast. Sometimes those yeah, drives only last right. one or two plays. <laughs> not the way they want to, though. <laughs> Bring the blitz again. They're not getting off the field here unless somebody gets You know what? They are going to get off the field because Malcolm Brown is going to take this all the way for another big play Texas touchdown. 74 yards. Now 
took him down the sidelines that time. And David Ash's numbers, you forget about the trouble he was having yeah, early I'm in the game. You. It's forgotten. Amazing. Uh, three touchdown throws in his last seven attempts, which all have been complete. And you see the speed of the Longhorns, too, beginning to really pay off. This is a deep and fast football team. David Ash, 54 yard touchdown pass, 66 yard touchdown pass, 55 yard touchdown pass. Now a 74 yard touchdown connection. Best advice for New Mexico State? Better call Saul. Uh, Ash in the second half, you would call that flawless. Even the perfectionist that he is would have. A good time enjoying this half. 119 yards passing, a 55-yard touchdown run. Three plays, 65, three rushes for 65, a 35-nothing run. All five touchdowns, five scoring plays occurred in a span of 16 plays. And the most impressive thing, Dave, is the shaky start that he had. That's this whole offense had. And yet he hung in there, continued to chop wood, and now they're knocking down trees. Shapiro's going to run it out for a couple of yards deep this time. He takes it to the left, finds a little gap, and again gets out of the 25 to 26 yard line before he is tripped up by Alex Delatore. And there's flags flying as we get ready to show you that last touchdown. Well, there, there's the guy who I think had coverage on this, Kalei Aalua, because you're going to see these three linebackers all blitz. And so the only one that can cover the back out of the backfield, Malcolm Brown, would be a peel technique by that outside rusher. That's where he sees that back release. He's got to peel off of his pass rush and cover that up. Otherwise, there's nobody there. And that's exactly what happened in that play. There was nobody there to cover Malcolm Brown. Ray, we've got two flags down. One at the 19-yard line on the near sideline. One just outside the numbers in the 36, also on the near sideline. We might have two penalties here for Cooper Castleberry's crew. During the return, an illegal low block, a number 28 of the, of the kicking team. Correction, number 29. After the play, a dead ball personal foul against number eight of the kicking team. Both penalties will be enforced. First down. Well, there's some of the mistakes that Mac Brown talked about that he doesn't like to see. Any coach, of course, would say that. So some significant field position being picked up here by the Aggies, and the ball will be marked at New Mexico State's 42-yard line. And now they're going to keep going. They marked yeah, off they one. two of these bad boys. Yeah, 30, 30 yards mark off. Boy, all the way. Look at this. Now at the 43-yard line of the Longhorns. And Sherrod Evans had the low hit. You can't hit a wedge block or a blocker low when you cover a kick. And then after the play, it was Jackson Shipley, number eight, is what they called. I don't know why he's covering kicks. I think it's Aaron, okay, Aaron Benson. Okay, it is number eight. Benson, who was the one who recovered the onside kickoff earlier, so he's had a bit of an impact, good and bad, on special teams for the Longhorns. First and ten, McDonald spins, looking for Dean underneath. There he is. Another catch for Dean. He is hit right away by Diggs. What a great tackle! Not much there. Maybe two, second and eight. This is how you come up and tackle people. And Diggs, he's done going high on the big fellow. We saw him get steamrolled earlier in the ball game uh, by the tight end, Andrew Dean. This time he goes a little bit lower to chop him down. Donald having to ad lib after an wayward snap, no gain. And closing fast, Kendall Thompson, the junior from Carthage, make the stop, third and eight. That's a nice scrape and close to the ball by Thompson to get him down. have slowed their pace considerably on the offensive side of the ball. Play game unless they call a timeout. And it looks like they did get the timeout. Oh, it's their first timeout of the half. 30 second timeout. 30 seconds. Well, 
50 years ago, 1963, for Texas football, the Longhorns, they celebrate a national championship that year. And the 50 years have come and gone. And what you're seeing tonight, by the way, is a tribute paid by this year's team with those numbers in between the horns on the helmets, as you see in 1963. Duke Carlisle at quarterback back in the day. That team captained by Scott Appleton, Tommy Ford, and David McWilliams. Sure. Ran the table. And there they beat Navy with Roger Staubach. You know, they won the national championship that year. That was back in the days of voted on before bowl games. Right. A lot of folks thought Navy was going to get him in the Cotton Bowl. Staubach was so awesome, of course. And that didn't happen. Darrell Royals team took care of business that year. So that team being celebrated all season long. And that is another great play by Cedric Reed, who has been dominant tonight. Ray, you jumped on this almost in the first play from scrimmage. Well, I don't know if Dada Richards, uh, he can, I, I, in fact, I do know he cannot handle Reed. Here, here he is, and here's Dada, and you're just going to see Cedric Reed power past him on an outside rush. Look at that. One arm just bends him off and then has the ability to do whatever he wants at that point. That's amazing that he can take a man and push him back. I'm talking about six foot three, 315 pound Dada Richards and handle him with one arm. Eight tackles, one sack, couple of hurries for we'll Reed tonight. Another punt from Chapman Brown. And he tucked it inside. That's a nice job there. Got it inside the 20 yard line of the 15 where the Longhorns will take over. And not a very good field position. Thought for a second we might see David Ash get a break in case McCoy coming to the ball game, but it looks like Ash is huddling up with that group. And there you see, there he's right there talking to Major Apple Whites. Tough challenge for this Texas team next week. Saturday, the Longhorn team is going to travel to Provo, Utah for the first road game of the season. And it's against BYU, of course. You can catch the director's chair edition of the game with multiple angles of the action exclusively on LA Jet. Coverage begins at 4 Central with Texas Game Day. Then on Texas BYU, director's chair edition 6 Central. Catch it on Longhorn and Ash. Complete, maybe a little bit of mental air there by Davis, not to concentrate. Second down and 10 coming up. Ash hasn't missed many in this half. In fact, that's the first incompletion since the second interception. David Ash, seven for seven, 242 yards. That covered back to the first half and three touchdowns. Well, on the ground game with Gray, he'll get a couple. Third and long coming up, making third and about seven. Rayshawn Nixon in there on the stop. MJ McFarland lined up in the backfield as a, you know, he's a tight end, but he lined up as a fullback and he had a pancake block on that play. Ash will take off. He's got room. Little stutter step, first down for the Texas Longhorns. Calendar in there on the stop. You know, it's funny, Ray, we talked about. The running depth for Texas. Count David Ash among the people who run the ball well, beside yeah. Gray, Brown, Bergeron, Johnson. Ash has to be included in there. He really is included in there. We saw him explode for a long touchdown tonight, but also make great decisions in the pocket. Davis. And that's, that could be a very short game. Johnson in there with a good tackle. Gain of five. It'll be second and five. And he goes back to Davis to rebuild his confidence. Pretty good numbers. You see those, those rushing yards, eight for 91 in the touchdown, and then the, the passing yards, he could close it down to 400 total yards. Ash middle of the field, just missed on Johnson. The Jay Johnson was open for just a split second. Well, the big thing with David Ash, Ray, talking with Major Appleby, talking with Mac Brown, how Ash, part of his growth over the past couple of years was not being so down on himself and not carrying the mistakes. And that's one of the reasons that Major Applewhite is on the field. Offensive coordinators tend to like to see the entire field. You cannot do that from the sidelines. And that relationship is going to be so important to the Longhorns all year. Screen for Ash. Davis bubble screen. Good defense that time. Broken up initially by Stephen Meredith, number 99, who plays that joker position. Linebacker and Bonilla also came in. Yeah, and it looked like they were going to get to the outside where they motioned Jonathan Gray. And they kind of outthought themselves, threw it back to the other side, and 
the Aggie defense was there waiting. Not too much punting action for Anthony Farah, but he'll get the opportunity tonight. He's also done the place kicking. You know, David Ash is so well regarded in the town, on the campus. Everywhere, folks talk about Texas Longhorn football. And a kick out of bounds. We'll see what the official finally marks it. It may not be at the 31 yard line. He's going to keep jogging up. Not a great kick that time by Farah. But you go back to the Valero Alamo Bowl and an unusual display of emotion from David Ash. And a lot of people talk about this, Ray, as a turning point in his career. Yeah, well, David Ash said he didn't even realize he had spiked the ball. Here he is with a scramble and just launching over three guys into the end zone. Now, he's jacked up and excited right there. <laughs> That's how you want your quarterback to react in a big moment like that. And the guys rallied around him. I know Kaylee Hartung, you spent a lot of time with David, and we'll get a thought from her. She's interviewed David uh, extensively over the offseason and even coming into this game. Right now, the ball is in the court of Andrew McDonald. The senior will come into the game just one out of three for three yards in his career in New Mexico State. And that play was destroyed by Hassan Ridgeway. The redshirt freshman from Mansfield crushed that play for a loss. It'll be second down and about 14. Well, what happens is they pull this guard. And here he is, but watch, this guard's going to pull right out of the way and just open up the gate for Ridgeway. That's a, a defensive tackle's dream right there. Out of Mansfield High School. Donald looks right. That's a nice catch. He'll get back the lost yardage and maybe one more by Joshua Bowen. Still going to be third down and long. Let's get more on Ridgeway from Kaylee. Dave, Hassan Ridgeway seeing the field very much so as a result of Ashton Dorsey's transfer. The senior announced on Tuesday that he would be leaving the program. Mac Brown saying it was a mutual decision. Yeah, he's on his way apparently uh, to Lamar. So you're right, the door opens. What's that saying? One window shuts, the door opens, or whatever that is. And McDonald in huge trouble here. Finally gets away with. That will not be an intentional grounding penalty as he was out of the pocket, but he had no chance almost the second that was snapped as Tevin Jackson and Carrington Bindham were all over it. It's actually a, a pretty athletic play by McDonald to pull back and get that ball out of his hands and basically get an incomplete pass and not lose the yardage there. So the Texas defense beginning to dominate the game. Quandre Diggs will await the punt at around the 25-yard line and suddenly Chapman Brown is back to the heavy duty that he did last year when he punted 70 times for the 1 and 11 New Mexico State Aggies, who this year are operating as an independent big rush by Texas. Nobody hit the punt. And Diggs will get it out to about the 32 yard line. The WAC, the Western Athletic Conference, isn't supporting football this year. So New Mexico State is independent. They will join the Sun Belt in 2014. That is, by the way, a sneaky good football league, the Sun Belt. And that will benefit New Mexico State, too. And what about the Doug Martin recruiting change the philosophy of, I'm going to come back into my neighboring state to the east. I'm going to go to Texas. I, I think that's a brilliant idea. Uh, you know, they're very close to Texas anyway. And with the Sun Belt territory now that they're going into, they need to look east for that rather than California where this program is concentrated in the past. Bergeron struggling to get outside, trying to break tackles, trying to get back to the line of scrimmage, but good defense all the way around by Treshawn Nixon, George Callender, and finally cornerback Cameron Fuller pushed him out of bounds. Well, this is a difficult situation Doug Martin walked in there. He kind of knew it because he had been there before as an offensive coordinator. 2011. Yep, 2012 he went to Boston College. That whole staff got blown out when Steve Adazio came in. Doug Martin came back to Las Cruces. He believes he can win there, and he believes the biggest problem is, one of the biggest problems, is that the, there's been a disconnect between the program and the community. Yeah, he took care of that right away. They have football camps and other community-oriented events. Often Brown broke one tackle, got out to the 38-yard line. Maybe they're going to mark it down to 37. Nixon on the stop. Gain of five, so it'll be third down and five for Texas. And you've got to change the whole attitude. You've got to change the perception that you can't win at a certain school. And it's been done before in places where it looked like you couldn't possibly win. And now these programs are producing winners, champions, NFL players. Ash, middle of the field, and knocked away. And a hit by Davis Cazares knocked that away from M.J. McFarland. 
turnarounds like Greg Schiano and Rutgers. Remember when Gary Barnett took Northwestern yes. to the Rose Bowl? And maybe those last two are, are the best examples because those programs have stayed great under their legacy. Snyder and Alvarez, of course, tough loss for K-State last night. Yeah, it's amazing to me what Bill Snyder did after leaving and then coming back and doing it again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, if he could bottle that and sell it, he wouldn't have to work anymore. So that's what Doug Martin is probably thinking, I can do this in New Mexico State. Those guys did it too. Texas punt it. And the fair catch at the 23-yard line by Darian Johnson with a minute and five to go in the third quarter. Longhorns in front, 35 to 7. You mentioned the community, Dave, and, and some of the things that they've been doing in the outreach is they bring in kids for the clinic. They had close to 500 kids come in for a football clinic to work with the athletes in the program and. You know, you, that's a great way to do it because when you hit the kids, now they're going to hit the parents and say, hey, I want to go back there. I had a great time. And you know how parents are. They're going to make their kids happy. They'll try to, anyway. McConnell yeah. on the swing pass to Brandon Bentoncourt. That'll be a gain out of the 28-yard line. Let's get back to Kaylee on the field. Dave, as Davis Cesara has told us, he's always been proud to wear his Aggie gear around Las Cruces, but now when he wears it around town, a lot more people are asking questions about the program. And good questions. You know, that's the thing. They can they can say things to you, but he, you're right. He, he told us over the phone that much more positive buzz. And the other thing, when you hit the children, when you tell me 500 children show up, that means that market is ready for you if you can start to produce results. He doesn't have to win six, seven games this year. and They probably won't. But just prove that you're getting better and the fans will respond. That's pretty close to flag coming in late, slightly away from the play as Bowen makes the catch. Close to the first down. You have a, a low block from outside in. An illegal block below the waist by number seven of the offense. It's a 15 yard penalty and replay second down. Adam Shapiro guilty of that, the junior from Rio Rancho, New Mexico. So right. instead of a first down, it's going to be second down and a little bit of distance now. They're going to mark the ball. Part of the player safety, Dave, a rule that you cannot run from the outside and block a defender that's inside of you below the waist and that, there's a good reason for that a lot of times the guy don't see it coming and he, there's no sense in it you got to protect these guys as best you can ball marked at the 17 Ray and so it's going to be 16 yards to go in second down waiting seconds of the third quarter we have not had if you're just joining us any problems with the targeting rules tonight and we might see New Mexico State just go ahead and run out the clock here in fact that's exactly what they're going to do Believe it or not, this was a 7 0 New Mexico State game in the second quarter. After this first quarter, it was 0 0. Texas then took a 14 7 lead with two big plays by halftime, and it's been all big plays for the Longhorns on offense since then. David Ash made his plays. Tajay Johnson made his. Everyone pitching in for the Longhorns. Sometimes life in Austin moves that fast, but when you get musicians like Stevie Ray Vaughan, the statue of that man in this city, that tells you how great Austin is. His brother Jimmy, of course, the guitars for the Fabulous Thunderbirds, we've heard them tonight, and get used to seeing these two spending a lot of time. And if you just read Major Applewhite's lips, he said, he was starting to say, don't beat yourself up, talking to David Ash. That's gonna be an opportunity for a first down, and he is, for New Mexico State, another catch by Josh Bowman. I thought he said, keep it weird. No, that's Keep Austin Weird. Oh, okay. Or on the Longhorn Network, Keep Austin Wired. Aha. Somebody got an extra sandwich for that. <laughs> well deserved. Sidelines hit immediately and cleanly by Sherrod Evans, the junior. Gain of seven, second down and three. This is a great opportunity now for some second teamers for the Longhorns to get the playing time and impress their coaching staff. And they are playing base defenses now. We saw Manny Diaz heat him up for a little while there, got the desired effect. Now they're laying back and working on techniques and base type uh, 
calls that they are uh, going to run throughout the season. That pass was ever going to be catchable. No flag thrown by the official. In fact, you see that hat right there tells you the receiver had gone out of bounds. So it's going to be third down and three. Have not seen New Mexico State throw the ball deep very often. McDonald's competent numbers on the night. Uh, and I, that's a speed thing. Basically, they know they can't get behind the Texas defensive backfield. And so, no sense in trying. You got to do it once in a while just to loosen them up, move them back. Maybe a grab and catch lightning. The trouble for McDonald couldn't handle the snap and more than happy to help bring him down with Shiro Davis, the sophomore from Shreveport, Louisiana. It's going to be fourth down and long. Valerian Ume Izioki is the center, and every once in a while he'll do this. Watched him on film and uh, he does a great job on his reach blocks and, and getting over to the next man one way or the other. But uh, every once in a while, he loses his concentration, and this is what happens. Andre Diggs back deep. Well, early in the game, New Mexico State led 7 to nothing in the second quarter, I should say. It was 0 0 at the end of one. But Texas defense has played well all night. Texas offense was putting in some bad spots with three turnovers. That has all changed rather dramatically. Diggs with an opportunity here. And good tackle in the open field by the Aggies' Anthony Joyner. Manny Diaz said, I'm angry. In fact, that wasn't the word he used about last year. He's happy tonight. On the Longhorn Network is powered by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Strong for all the roads ahead. South Congress, a lot of foot traffic will be around South Congress, 6th Street and all the areas around Austin tonight. Longhorn fans and others celebrating. It appears to be a Longhorn win of the opening night of the season, just inside 13 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And Bergeron putting a nifty move, and he's got David Ash as his lead blocker, and Bergeron gets into New Mexico State territory at the 43-yard line. Darian Johnson, the cornerback. I mentioned Ash, of course, but this offensive line has been outstanding for the Longhorns. Once they got it going, that's the key. Yeah, and they, they just have worn the Aggies down over the course of this 60 minutes. Not much there, but we wanted to point out they're number 68 right there. Big, and we do mean big, Desmond Harrison. That's going to use up a lot of your telestrator ink, Ray, if you try yeah, to circle I, that I got cap. a bigger circle. That isn't going to work. And what an interesting story this junior from Houston is a transfer from Contra Costa Community College. So much potential, just not much experience yet. Opportunity here for Bergeron to break into the secondary. And I think the big fella had a little block there, Ray. Oh, he just collapses that whole uh, right side of the Aggie defensive line. Watch the big fella. Uh, here he is right here. Bam, he's going to just work his man down and create a tremendous scene. 6'8", 310 pounds, and that's a 6'8", 310, you'd think he'd have a little Dunlop disease. <laughs> not the Dunlop's case. Dunlop over his belt? No, not at all. Ash, bump fake, he wants to go deep. Jump ball, and he's Davis in the end zone, ruling on the field, and a flag is down, too. The field judge has called incomplete. Let's see which way this flag goes. That ball hung up there a long time. That's, That's interference by number 10 of the defense. Penalties declined. It's a touchdown. Well, wait a minute. Now, the field judge ruled incomplete. Yes, I saw did. him wave it off. And the referee, I don't I don't think he got that, that word. All right. Well, let's take a look because this ultimately will be decided by the booth. Goodness, he caught that in. Yes, that's a touchdown. Now watch the field, Joe. Well, let's see. I'm certain that he called it. Yeah, he came in and, and uh, gave the incomplete pass sign. Wow. That's, that's a foot in with the possession of the football. That's a heck of a concentration play right there. They'll review it, but. Oh, not by Davis. He turned to Dean Thompson Davis all the way around. This is a fabulous catch. 
folks here getting a look on the big scoreboard, and that left foot is clearly down. He has possession, which is the other thing, of course, that is so important. Yeah, that's six if I've ever seen it. Great concentration and body awareness by Mike Davis. If that stands up, but we think it will, that it's going to be four touchdown passes for David Ash tonight. Yeah, he clearly has the foot in and possession of the ball. That's a touchdown. And it is the ruling on the field that stands. It is a touchdown. We saw the one official call it incomplete. Another official ruled touchdown, and that is the ultimate ruling for the long run drop, 41 to 7. But Cooper Castleberry, the referee, knew what he was talking about. Four plays, 64 yards in a minute six. The Longhorns have not had any of these 9, 10, 11, 12 play drives. They're going quick strike. Right. These drives are happening sometimes in under a minute. The big scoreboard said it, Mike Davis said it, the referee said it. And on Texas sideline, a lot happier now after this dominant run from the middle of the second, actually the end of the second quarter to where we are now. David Ash and Mike Davis hooking up on it. And what a catch by Davis to get the foot down on a little bit of that burnt orange paint and to maintain possession of the football. I got to tell you, one of the funnest things is going over there on the sidelines after making a big play like that, a connection like that, and you start telling each other what you saw and what you did. And you go, <laughs> hey, you see what had happened was this, that, and the other. That's fun. I love that. Uh, all smiles now. Will be a touchback. See if the quarterback situation for New Mexico State. We'll see if we see any more of King Davis the third, or if it's going to be Andrew McDonald. Davis had been talked about extensively by the coaching staff as the future of the program. McDonald is senior, and he's going to come back out. Yeah, and I think McDonald took that job. I don't think there's any doubt that he is much more prepared and ready to go than what King Davis the third was when we saw him come in, error after error. Just young guy stuff, and so they're, they're comfortable with Andrew McDonald. In there. Well, the good news for King Davis is this will be his team next year if he stays healthy. That's going to be an incompletion. Good coverage that time by Santos. Snoggins unable to hang out of the ball, so it'll be second down and ten. There's King Davis, freshman from Mesquite, Texas, and a lot of hope for him. He is at the point where he's—I don't think he's quite mastered the offense yet. It's probably part of the problem. And you have a new coaching staff, so everything is new. Yeah. And it takes a while. It took David Ash a while, as, as we all witnessed. That pass slightly underthrown, but a great job by Jordan Bergstrom, the junior from Portland, Oregon, to come back and catch that football. About three yards short of a first down. It'll be third down. We'll call it three. Doug Martin was telling us, uh, you know, we asked him, what do you, what do you expect here, coach? What do you want to get us? He said, hey, we want to go home a better football team, and we want to create an identity. Those are the two main goals and purposes for coming in here and, and playing this ball game. And I think they've achieved both of those. I thought it like it might have been deflected at the line of scrimmage. We got another swat? Yeah, I, or def ah, you know what? That didn't go backwards, though. I don't think a swat counts if the pass goes in the second. To me, down. you get as so much as a hangnail on that ball. I'm going to give you a swat. In fact, the flight of the ball, something good could happen for your defense. Yeah, it looked like that ball changed some positions there. So McDonald, after a three and out against the Texas defense, said it really has been very stout tonight. They've given up 286 yards, only 80 on the ground, 206 in the air. In the first half, New Mexico State had 11 first downs, only three in this half. And they run the fake to the up man, and it's going to be a first down and a little bit more out to midfield. Leroy Scott making the stop, and how about Cazares, the up man, with the fake? The safety. Picks up 18. 
And Texas is so intent on getting their blocks to set up the return that they didn't take care of their initial responsibility. Everyone has a certain responsibility to stop and contain a fake. And that's the first thing you have to execute. Once you determine there is no fake, then you go about the next business. Donald turns right into traffic. Up for grabs, out of bounds. He took a hit. Big 96, Chris Whaley. And when McDonald turned, I don't know he could see anything with Whaley almost in his jersey, second and 10. Whaley takes the advantage of nobody blocking him. Another blown assignment by the Aggies. And it's fun when nobody blocks you. Just ask Chris Whaley. Interesting, they call this offense at times a hurry up, and sometimes there is a lot of standing around and waiting. Well, they got two uh, modes fastball and look. And look is where you stand around and look for quite a while. Okay, well, you're going to look at a tackle by Dolphin Santos, the sophomore from Van, Texas. Third down, and there's a loss here. It's going to be third down in about a dozen. Yeah, and Santos, he's right here. And watch him. He gets the key and he just follows behind his defensive lineman there, Reed, and shoots through the trapper coming around. Uh, that, that was the center, Ume Izioki, and he just beat him up the field. Donald under pressure, hit as he throws, trying to screen it to Jeremy Morrison. The blitz was just too fast. Too much pressure that time from Texas. Jeff Goat in there. You see that track, that sprinter stance that Jeff Goat has, and he just explodes around the edge. And You know, we haven't mentioned Devontae Wallace much here this afternoon or this evening I should say and we have mentioned Jackson Jeffcoat quite a bit so that kind of tells you in terms of that matchup who's been more successful for the ninth time tonight Gail Chapman Brown on to punt how that didn't get blocked I'll never know Diggs is just going to get out of the way and let this roll what an incredible punt by Brown down to the 12 yard line 10 10 minutes exactly remaining in this opening game and the Longhorns started out with speed hey, on the team here and right the man himself Mac Brown this live press conference Mondays at 11 a.m. exclusively on Longhorn Network you can also watch live online and now on your mobile the home of the Longhorn Network app is available for free in the Apple App Store and a first appearance of the night for Case McCoy David Ash got the rest of the night off Joe Bergeron will be the tailback you see what Case did last year the senior from Graham Texas that McCoy name of course legacy in this Longhorn program. Bergeron, not much there. Fought to get to the 15-yard line. Pick up maybe three. Hey, sometimes statistics will uh, tell you the truth. Sometimes they'll lie to you. If you look at some of these things tonight, New Mexico has run 72 plays. Excuse me, New Mexico State has run 72 plays. Texas, 55. And uh, the Aggies have 31 minutes, 32 seconds of possession. Texas, 18 minutes, 17 seconds. Uh, uh, those, that ain't the truth right there. <laughs> Bergeron spinning, fighting, and gets out to the 23. That'll be a first down for the Longhorns. Gain of eight. The junior had 16 TDs last year. This is a, a typical Bergeron run. Bang, boom, just bouncing off of people, dragging people. That, that guy, he, he'll carry the load. Cazares was hanging on to that foot for about five yards. Might have picked up some turf burn. Bergeron just taking punishment, giving punishment out. As he gets to the 30, maybe even the 31, Dylan Davis bringing him down. Bergeron is, excuse me, Dave, he's the quintessential four-minute back. <laughs> He'll just keep running and running and running. Well, there's all kinds of... It, the interesting thing about Texas here is we have a timeout being called is they can they can unveil any kind of tailback that you need yeah, they can go with gray who's steady they can go with brown who's unpredictable they can go with Bergeron who pounds you and they can even you can count but the Jay Johnson now is another speed guy I mean that that's an enviable position if you're Texas it really is 
Uh, you know, it can lead to problems sometimes. There's only one football, and you got all these guys who can do something with it. You want to keep them all happy and, and keep them in there and, and getting the reps that they need, and that's the challenge for Major Applewhite. And don't forget, we talked earlier, David Ash runs the ball well, too. He got a 55-yard touchdown run tonight. Because the Longhorn team, and I, I have to admit, I was surprised when they were picked fourth in the Big 12. Mm. And they have an opportunity to, to tell everybody that Texas football is where Texas football thinks it ought to be. Bergeron, nice footwork. Oh, yeah. Boy, that's an excellent footwork. He'll get it out to the 41 yard line with a Longhorn first down. Anthony Edwards brought him down. It's hard to make a guy miss in the hole. And, and watch right here, Trayshawn Nixon right there. He's got him right now. <laughs> Bergeron with a little bit of a stiff arm and then the jump back inside and the explosion when his feet back and hit the ground. 68 yards for Bergeron on just eight carries. McCoy, good defensive play out there. The, the official is going to say that John Harris, who had a touchdown catch earlier tonight, was knocked down by Lewis Hill, although he never really was. That's a five-yard pickup, second down and five coming up. Yeah, the forward progress was definitely stopped, and they, they blow whistles quicker these days to protect guys. What do you think of those numbers over the horns there? This is a tribute to the I like 1963 it. team. It will be voted on after the game by the players as to whether or not they'll stay all season long. Now, I don't have a vote, but I would vote yes. And you and me both. Bergeron, nice cutback. Bergeron into New Mexico State territory. I believe he'll be ruled down. And you have to see the headlinesman saying Bergeron was down. Bonilla on the stop. Here's a real speed look at this. Yeah, if you've ever seen a, a pinball with legs, watch Bergeron. Bounces out. Makes the move, bounces off another guy. And Texas tapping into that running back depth by going with Jalen Overstreet. Wondered if we were going to see him tonight. And yet another great tailback. He's a redshirt freshman from Tatum, Texas. And it just the rich get richer at yeah. that position. I tell you, he's explosive. I would defy any hardcore college football fan to find a team with better running back depth than Texas. Overstreet, it's out of bounds to the 20. He was going to come in and play quarterback. That position is kind of taken care of right now. They also have a true freshman who was very impressive in the spring game in Tyrone Swoops. Yep. So Overstreet he takes his talents into the backfield at a running back position, and he can get it done there. Yeah, the switch to the other hand, though, might have been a better idea as he was heading that sideline. Now, David Ash, we've been told by John Bianco from the sports information staff that David Ash becomes just the fifth player in Texas history to score a register, I should say, 400 yards of total offense in a game, and it's never been done in a season opener until tonight. Oh, and after the start, you'd have, you'd have been hard-pressed to imagine that was going to transpire. Well, that brings us to our play of the game, powered by the all-new 2014 Chevy Silverado, and it's K uh, David Ash to, to Jay Johnson, the sophomore with speed, and this is just spectacular. And this is what made it 14-7 to for Texas, and that's when the floodgates opened. The offense heated up. They started a, a couple of one-play drives for touchdowns, and just really started lighting up the Aggies defense with the big plays. Longhorns tonight, 634 total yards, 348 in the air, 286 on the ground, accomplished in only 63 plays. They're going to get a great test next week in Provo. Boy, Texas is going to take a timeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So play clock running out. Yeah, this the next couple of weeks for the Longhorns are really going to be interesting because you go up to Provo, never easy up there. Bronco Mendenhall does a great job with that team. And then this on Longhorn Network, by the way, Ole Miss, September the 14th. If you watch the first couple of the first night of college football, they had a crazy win over Vanderbilt. Kansas State, can they recover from what happened to them? By the way, that's a good North Dakota State team. It they is. lost it. Very good. Ames, never easy. And then the Red River shootout, as big as it gets between these two schools, Texas and OU. That's the one. TCU, always a tough out. They're playing LSU tonight. 
Kansas, that'll also be on Longhorn Network, a team that almost upset Texas last year. West Virginia, first time in Morgantown for Texas. That is a fascinating experiment, and then you finish the year against Baylor. Now that Baylor team could end up having the finest offense in Division I this year. Oklahoma State is also in there, too. Oklahoma State, speaking of offense, that game will be here in Austin. And then Texas Tech. Oh, yeah, that game will also be in Austin. And then that is a tough one, December the 9th, in Waco against a team that is so crazily explosive. I'm going to go on a limb, Dave, and I'm going to tell you that's going to be the Big 12 de facto championship game. The last game. Yes, the okay. Baylor game. Texas on the move. This is nine rushes, one pass, and that pass was a short one. That's what you call four-minute offense. Just grind that clock up, control not only the tempo, but the physical nature of the ball game by running it out. Overstreet. He has wonderful vision. Tried to reach for the goal line. A did not make it, but it'll be. He should have a first down, Whoa. actually. I think he got the first down, so it should be first and goal and first and inches for a touchdown. That's what great vision. They're going to go very quickly here. And Overstreet, there's his first college touchdown in his first game. What did you say, the rich get richer? No doubt about it. So you're telling me they can go five deep at that position effectively? Might have more than that. They're hiding with that, yeah. and they might as well. Wow. So the unveiling of Jalen Overstreet, just to give the coaches around the country and around the Big 12 something else to worry about. 12 plays, 88 yards, 348, longest drive of the night for Texas. In fact, I almost could say that their other touchdown drives may not have added up to right. 12 plays. <laughs> Overstreet just taking that little inside zone play. Gets the nice block up front. Takes it in the end zone. He's on the scoreboard. Texas game day final powered by Chevy Silverado following the game on Longhorn Network. That whole group right there. You see Lowell Galindo with his hands up in the air. Ricky Williams in there. He's in there somewhere. Brooks. Yeah. David and the gang looking forward to that. They got plenty to talk about. Tonight with the performance of David Ash. DeJay Johnson. Lots to, and the defense. And they'll be taking an E, which gives us a chance to tell you that, you know what, Mac Brown's first game was the head coach of Texas in 1998, was against New Mexico State. A fellow named Ricky Williams ran for six touchdowns in that game. <laughs> he did that quite a bit in yeah. his career here. Break out the grainy old coaches film. 66 to 36 for the first win for Mac Brown. This one tonight will be number 151. His 50th win against New Mexico State with that man, Vince Young. Came into the ball game, got his first touchdown of many. He was pretty good. Yeah, that was 2003. A couple of years later. Oh, brother. Andrew McDonald will keep it. And trying to get out of bounds to stop the clock. Manny Diaz wants a word with one of his defensive players. You see that right there? He went right after one of his guys. And can you can you find Ricky Williams for us there? There he is. In the blue yeah, shirt. That's the man right there. Yes. <laughs> Looking good. Find that Heisman of the Texas football offices, along with Earl Campbell, by the way. He's the Texas running back. It should be a first down and is for New Mexico State. Gain out to the 45 yard line. Uh, Kaylee, uh, Ricky Williams, now a colleague of yours. He is. He's been a lot of fun to work with on Texas game day. And guys, I have to tell you, during the pregame show today, Ricky said his Heisman Trophy is at a friend's house. Now, I only heard this through my IFB. I couldn't see the expression on his face, but I hope he was joking. You don't know. You just don't know. He might be doing it. Spread the love around, though, Ben. You know, that's awfully nice of him if he indeed 
I would like to know if that's true. Does he visit his friend often? <laughs> and Ricky's got friends in a lot of places, so it may not even be in the Texas area. I wouldn't mind running around with that thing for a little while. Oh, what a hit. Dalton Santos. That's a clean hit. My partner is thrilled right now. Yeah, he didn't get enough. He had to hit himself in the head three, four times <laughs> afterwards. Watch it. Watch it. Here he is right here on, on the outside. And watch him close and then make a big hit. Bam, right there. That's a how do you do. <laughs> Give me some more, he says. Second down and six. And there's so much talk about hitting. That is as clean and hard hit as you can deliver. We have not had, in case you're wondering, any of those targeting issues tonight. Only six penalties, as a matter of fact. There was one in the Texas A&M game. The Yankees are losing a player for the next half, the next first half, I should say, of their upcoming game. Bowen with a catch and Bowen with a first down on the 43-yard line. That's the other Aggies, not the Aggies you're watching tonight. Santos, the sophomore, getting a lot of playing time. Steve Edmond taking the rest of the night off. Yeah, a lot of times guys play defense because they can't catch. Now, <laughs> this would have been a great grab. Uh, I'm going to tell you, and he read the route perfectly, steps in front. It would have been a one-hand snag for Santos, but a uh, great play anyway. Let's not forget, he had a key play on special teams. He was an up man. He had he a 23-yard return that set up Texas for good field position in the first half that led to one of their touchdowns. That was a very important play. Yeah, that made it 21 to uh, 7 at the time. And that was not only a swat, that was nearly an interception by Bryce Cottrell, a redshirt freshman from Plano. So this is a great opportunity for guys like the Bryce Cottrells, the Dalton Santos of the world, with Texas in this game comfortably in pocket, to be able to get some playing time. And that's something that Mac Brown talked to us about. Ray was this depth makes everybody better, the competition's better. Now you cannot let up because you'll lose your gig. The only way to create depth is to get guys on the field. And that's what you're able to do when you win handily like this. Yes. Santos <laughs> is having fun right now, ain't he? <laughs> he is going corner to corner on this field right now, side to side. Yeah, he's going to do a lot of talking this week. He's going to ask the coach, hey, put me back to return the kicks. I already showed you what I can do there. I'm averaging 23 yards a kick return, coach. That's more than better than half the guys in the nation right now. On fourth down and two. New Mexico State and take one last shot at it. They've got those pistol peats on their helmet. It also better hurry up. And first down. Forward progress will get into the 32-yard line. Joseph Matthews with a catch. Well, there is one thing a little bit different about this home opener, and that's the uh, Darryl, Darryl Royal's not here. The great coach passed and such an influence on the, I mean, on the goodness of this program. He will always be the man when you think of Texas football. Mac Brown, by the way, is the first one to tell you that. He's perfectly okay with that. McDonald fumbles the football. It's going to be recovered by the Longhorns. Too easy a play. Leroy Scott comes away with it. I was one of those ball slipped out of my hands things, coach. Here he is. You see, he's on the run, ready to throw it, and... When he pulls it back, it just falls out of his hands. Getting back to Coach Royal, just interesting that, that, that Mac Brown says, you know, sometimes it hits him when he least expects it. Yeah. Uh, at, a, at a luncheon, maybe, that, 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 that he's always been at. The Coach Royal, of course, the head coach of the 1963 championship team and others. And his influence on this football program will always be felt. That's why they named the stadium. Darrell K. Royal, Texas Memorial Stadium, and Joe Jamail Field. And he'll be missed, of course. He was able to come out to the one last game last year to be honored by these fans. That was a big moment. He has the all-time record for Texas wins as a head coach. Mac Brown's going to get number 151 tonight. And he was asked, we asked him the other day, how are you thinking, it was Lowell Galindo asked him, how are you feeling about, you know, maybe catching or passing Darrell Royal? And he says, I don't care. And he didn't mean it sarcastically. He just means that he knows and understands yeah. and appreciates what Daryl Royal 
is meant to this football program and to football in the state of Texas, period. And he's okay with that. He's no jealousy issues. He's, sure. He was an advisor. They spoke often. And he misses Darrell Royal, as all Longhorns fans do. He says that even as time goes on, he misses him more. Yeah. You, know, you mentioned it. Things come up out of nowhere and remind him of the mentor he had. The friend. Overstreet getting some great opportunities here to showcase his talents. Longhorns even going, I think, three deep along the, the line. And that's something they've got to start thinking about because they're going to be losing three starters Hawkins Hopkins and Walters Walters made his 39th start tonight they've got to start building that depth for next year in the offensive line when they get the opportunity boy on the keeper one more just basically running out the clock the Mexico State can't stop it no reason to anyway we see Kennedy is still number 77 getting some playing time at that left tackle so we didn't see a lot of Desmond Harrison babe but what we did see of him what did you think I think he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And there's another one right there. Overstreet sees the end zone, and he'll get there for the second time tonight. He's got explosiveness and a knack of running the football. I mean, that's that was his calling card as a quarterback. And so the transition into being a tailback wasn't that big of a deal. What great vision he had to see that cutback, see the flow of the defense, and then work back against the grain and then explode into the end zone. Now, Mike Brown said this yesterday when he was talking about how he's going to just try to flood the field with as many players as he can. And his message to the team is going to be, you want more playing time? Play better. Earn it. Well, over street, in the end zone twice. And the Mexico State's a little tired, and they certainly don't have Texas' depth. But that's not Overstreet's fault. He's doing what he can do against who's out there. And look at this. You're watching a little history tonight. 715 total yards. The record back in the last century, 1998, against the Owls of Rice was 692. 715 yards of total offense. Well, you are in the evening. Big 12 after yes. all. Yes. You, you pretty much have to almost do that every week. And that's going to be ultimately the big test for Texas's defense. When you start to run into those cats from the Big 12, that's going to be happening soon. Not in the next couple of weeks, but soon. Actually, Ole Miss will give them a good test. BYU, I don't consider a big offensive power. No, but they play good defense. Yes, they do. No, no, no. Right, Van Noy is, is one of the, yeah. Kyle Van Noy is one of the best linebackers in the country. Uh, BYU in a tussle with Virginia today. And it was delayed by some bad weather in Charlottesville. But Ole Miss can move the football. And that's that's a game. That would really be a great game to watch. And you'll be able to watch that game, by the way, on Longhorn Network on September the 14th. Big off return here for Jordan Matthews. All right, well, the other night, if you stayed up a little bit late, because Ole Miss and Vanderbilt cost a few people some sleep. Yeah, it was one of those people. Bo Wallace slings his sidearm. What a catch there. Ole Miss had one of the outstanding recruiting classes in coming into this year. They did lose Robert Kimdichie, though, for a little while. Very good defensive player, the older brother of the top recruit. So that might be a bit of a problem for Ole Miss, but they are sending waves around the SEC that they are coming back to be competitive in the competitive SEC. Ole Miss has not been here since 1925. Find out what took them so long. <laughs> they just, you know they can load up on the Key Boston Weird T-shirt. You can see this game 7 o'clock Central Time on LHN. Texas took him to the woodshed last year in Oxford. And has handled them before, but this is an Ole Miss team that is absolutely better than that team that Texas played last year. And it was BYU with a couple of years ago that came in here, led Texas at halftime. Ray, we were at that. Yes. Yeah. And David Ash, it was a, the whole Garrett Gilbert thing kind of blew up. David Ash got an opportunity to play. There was an issue about who the quarterback was going to be here. David Ash was kind of thrown into a situation where I don't think he was quite ready for it. 
Well, he's he's more than ready now. They were actually uh, running McCoy in to throw the ball and had Ash in to kind of run the ball after Gilbert went out of that ball game. So that was kind of the the uh, I guess initiation for David Ash. It was a great comeback win for Texas because frankly BYU for the first half was way better in that game. But BYU went conservative and they couldn't hang on. That's next week. But tonight I think the Longhorns have earned their celebration. Mac Brown win number 151 here at Texas. A couple of words of encouragement for Doug Martin. Well, I think Mac Brown's going to take this one and uh, he's going to have some good things on film to teach and, and correct with his football team. But they also did some great things that he'll be able to compliment and build them up on as well. In the first quarter, Texas had 45 yards, no points. From then on, 670 yards and 56 points. That's why you play all four quarters. Yep, at one point, yes, New Mexico State led this game 7 0. You kind of figured that wasn't going to last, and it did not. The Jay Johnson made sure of that. Mike Davis made sure of that with a beautiful catch in the end zone, getting that one foot down. And David Ash came back from adversity once again to totally solidify and cement his position of leadership on this ball club. And Amanda Ray Bentley is called the top quarterback of the Big 12 and maybe beyond. And over time, we'll get a good look at that. As college football gets through the first couple of weeks of the season, of course, there's more games Sunday and even into Monday night with Florida State and Pitt. And of course, as always, here at DKR, we finish with the eyes of Texas. Kaylee Hartong is standing by with Matt Brown. Kaylee. Coach Brown, your team went on to set the school record for total offense. When you think back to when you were down seven to nothing, what did this team show you as they put 56 points on the board? Kaylee, it shows that we didn't play like we should the first half, but we have a chance to be really good. Uh, when we got in and really evaluated halftime, we only had 29 plays the first half because we were either scoring or turning it over. They had 47 plays. They had 21 minutes of total or uh, time of possession. We had nine, so we had to stay on the field more. And, Thought the adjustments for the defense were really good on the quarterback the second half. And uh, David Ash played really well and we started running the ball much better. You said you wanted to see your two deep at work tonight. Did you see what you wanted from them? We did. We got to play a whole lot of guys that helps team morale. Obviously, they don't have depth and they got tired in the uh, third, fourth quarter, late third. And our guys didn't. They hung in there. So that, that should help us next week. Thank you, Coach. Thank you, Kay. So the final score tonight, 56-7. to seven. For Ray Bentley, I'm Dave Lamont, and as always, we close it out. The Eyes of Texas Studio will take it after this. Silverado. Here's your host, Lowell Galindo. It never gets old, Amon Brooks. No, it does not. It says my name. Texas getting their final powered by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. To quote the great George Strait, take a truck, take a Chevy, run. <laughs> 56 to 7, the Texas Longhorns run over the New Mexico State Aggies. Touch the horn. Celebrate a little bit, review potentially what you could have done better in the first half, and then bottle everything.